Westlake opened up the 2013 season on the wrong side of a W as Cedar Park's Nate Grimm edged the Shaps 43-31 a week ago. And for Westlake, the road doesn't get easier. The Temple Wildcats bested Westlake in a 49-42 shootout in 2012. This year, Temple has its offensive commander-in-chief and Chad President, and the junior quarterback heads to Austin with plenty of Wildcat weapons. Despite the loss to Cedar Park, Westlake has reason to be optimistic as they have some firepower of their own. It's Westlake and Temple, and it's coming up next. This winter, prepare to be amazed as Elisa's Dance Academy and the Westlake Symphonic Orchestra come together to perform a variety of holiday favorites. From Tchaikovsky to Jingle Bell Rock, audiences will be astounded by concert-quality music and dramatic visual effects in a stunning production perfect for all ages. Join us December 12th, 13th, and 14th as the Westlake Technical Entertainment Crew and Lexus of Austin present The Nutcracker Spectacular. The sights and sounds of game day. Welcome everybody to Chaparral Stadium live in Austin, Texas. It's Westlake and Temple in game two of the 2013 campaign for the Westlake Chaparrals. I'm Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell, Abe Garcia in just a moment. Well, it's here, game two. And I know after a loss, you always want to see what you can do better. And that's exactly what the Westlake Chaparrals are going to have to find out, what they can do better from game one to game two. That's right, and the expectations were so high on the defense coming into this season. Last week against Cedar Park, certainly disappointed. Tonight against Temple, Chad President is really a souped up Nate Grimm, if you will. Very athletic quarterback, great arm, headed to Baylor University in two years. So the defense for Westlake is going to have a tough time tonight. It's interesting when you sign a letter of commitment, or at least offer your commitment to Art Bryles, a couple of miles north of Austin, your sophomore season in April, if you will. But he is just a junior. One other person we have to watch out for, and it's quite a person indeed, is on the left side of the offensive line for the Wildcats. His name, Darius Joyner, another Division I prospect. Yeah, Joyner, an athletic 6'5", 280, going to Houston. He's a guy that Westlake is going to have to account for. They're going to have to move their rush to the other side of the line. He is that left tackle for, uh, protecting Chad, Chad President's blind side. Well, one other member of our broadcast crew has to be held accountable at some point, and he's the only one battling the elements. But I will say for Abe Garcia, at least, Abe, our window is open, so we know exactly how hot it is down there. But at the end of the day, right now it's certainly better than it was a week ago where cramps and obviously dehydration were a big, big part of this Westlake issue, if you will, trying to substitute players in and really got into a bind when you think about it, John a bind with all kinds of injuries that just popped up out of nowhere where you had to sub guys in. That's right, and that was a huge issue for Westlake, and the backups on defense certainly did not fare well, especially in that fourth quarter when they were wearing down. Let's go down to the sidelines and Abe Garcia. Abe, one thing I know, it's not as hot, but certainly still got that humidity factor in tonight's home opener here with Westlake and Temple. Well, heat's always going to be a factor, Joe, especially the early games in the season, but you know what? It's not as hot as it was last week, and that's probably because I'm not wearing any pants but I am wearing shorts. <laughs> Very nice. Abe Garcia down on the sideline. Let's take a look at the game day weather, and we get an opportunity to take a look at the captains as well. Jordan Siebert along with Jack Meredith and a slew of captains, if you will. Zach Dansby, Calvin Anderson, John Rhodes, and Luke Womack, along with Bobby Dwyer, Tate Shaw, and Jordan Siebert. Nice moment there on crutches is Jack Meredith, but it's partly cloudy, 94 degrees, and a 43% humidity. So not high, but certainly Enough to build up a little bit of lather. No wind to speak of as the flags on the north end of the stadium are limp. And, John, it's time to play football in the hills of Westlake. It's going to be exciting. Westlake and Temple, this game last year, 49-42. to Like Coach Spradlin said before the game, he hopes that it's not that kind of offensive game, that uh, the defensive coordinators were not enjoying that game last year. But we'll see. It's going to be a great football game. One matchup that we want to talk about, impact players, if you will, as we get an opportunity to show you those right now. Of course, we mentioned Temple's Chad president and Darius Joyner, but Sean Rawlings, an all-purpose performance for the ages, but in the middle of the defense, back for his second week, Brecken Hager is going to play despite still recovering from that knee and leg injury suffered in May. But Brecken goes, as does the rest of the linebacking core. They're going to have their hands full tonight with this rushing attack, with not only Chad president, but also Jeff Carr. Yeah, and discipline is such an important thing when you face a read option with a quarterback like Chad President and Jeff Carr, who really burst onto the scene last week against Round Rock. Those linebackers got to, you know, keep their discipline, keep their gap, and account for the man that they're supposed to account for. 
with that, we have the opportunity to break it here before the ball game kicks off. We'll come back with starting lineups and the kickoff live from Chaparral Stadium. This is Westlake football. At age 40, attorney and Marine Corps reservist David Little was the picture of health until the left side of his body went completely numb. We were on the phone while he was driving home when he suddenly stopped talking. My dad had a stroke when he was driving me home. I'm just really glad he ended up at St. David's South Austin. St. David's South Austin saved my life. Do you know what to do in an emergency? Visit stdavids.com to learn more. The Steam Team, your number one choice for cleaning residential and commercial carpet, tile, and wood flooring, upholstery, air ducts, and more, including 24-hour emergency water and fire damage restoration. The Steam Team is an Austin original, locally owned and operated since 1983. All employees are trained and certified by the Institute of Inspection, Cleaning, and Restoration. We guarantee our services and will do whatever it takes to please our customers. Call 451-TEAM or online at thesteamteam.com. We welcome you back to Chaparral Stadium live here in Austin, Texas. Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell, Abe Garcia down on the sidelines. Our impact player is a service of Outlaw Fuel. Outlaw Protein and Energy Fuel is a different kind of protein supplement. It looks different and definitely tastes different. And, uh, of course, if you want to know more about it, click outlawprotein.com, and you can buy Outlaw Protein and Energy Fuel locally at Wheatsville Co-op. We take a look at the offensive line for the Westlake Chaparrells. Calvin Anderson, Taylor Marks, Bobby Dwyer, Silas Connolly, and, of course, Big Will Copa. 273, yard, 273 pounds of offensive linemen for the Westlake offense. And, of course, we get a look at the, the starting lineups here. First, for the, the backs and the receivers, we mentioned the offensive line for the Westlake Chaparrales. And, of course, the backs and receivers, Alex Chavez, along with Brian Kinney, who got his first touchdown a week ago on his first game in the varsity level. And we can't say enough about quarterback Jordan Sievert, 6'4", 218-pound senior, 9 of 21, so not necessarily efficient last week, but 185 yards and two touchdowns. And uh, we look at the receivers as well with Patrick Elliott, only two catches and 15 yards, but it was Sean Rawlings that did a lot of the damage last week. 5'10", 170-pound junior, four catches, 123 yards, and a touchdown. 30.8 yards per catch. A ridiculous number for Sean Rawlings, who has become a big, big part of this receiving core. Yeah, when you're an opposing coach watching Westlake on film, Sean Rawlings is the guy that you see that jumps out at you, especially in that game last, last week against Cedar Park. It's going to be that way all season. Sean Rawlings is this offense's playmaker. We'll get a look at the Wildcat defense. They are in their white jersey tops with blue numerals. The white pants trimmed in blue. Some of them are in white pants trimmed in blue. Others are in blue pants. We'll have to see if that's consistent. I don't think I've ever seen that. It'll be cold to kick it off here. From right to left, we are underway. A side winding kick that'll be fielded by Rawlings at the five. At the 10 to the 15, cuts it to the middle of the field. At the 25, a spin move at the 30. He's knocked down at the 32 yard line. And that's where Westlake will begin their offensive series of the night as we open things up here at Chaparral Stadium for the 2013 home opener. Across the defensive line for the Wildcats, James Judy and Osha Solomon are the ends. The nose guard is Sergio Hernandez. The outside linebackers are Ty McCorkle and Michael Hicks. Inside, Dominic Thompson, Dominique Thompson, and Deshaun Sellers. And, of course, Dominique Thompson, 14 tackles, three behind the line of scrimmage. He is committed to Navy, the Naval Academy getting a fine, fine linebacker. Clint Cole and Vedrick Grayer are the corners. And D'Artagnan Say and Ladarius Thomas speed in the middle for the back end of the defense and the first play goes to Alex Chavez on the snap to the left side of the offensive line and he falls forward to the 31 yard line his helmet came off that'll stop the clock Chavez will have to leave the field momentarily and there's big James Judy the defensive end 6'4 240 with the tackle for loss right there had a tackle for loss last week against Round Rock he is the big man up front for Temple and backwards towards the 31 yard line so like John Nidell said a loss of one on the play second down and 11 pistol formation here to the near side the handoff will stay with Ben Slaughter Slaughter once again wrapped up twice they go to the left side and twice the Chaparrales go backwards a huge defensive push down low and once again coming up and making a pop there was Michael Hicks Michael Hicks coming in from the right side as Westlake once again going backwards officially no gain on the play as the nose of the football lies on the left hash mark at the 31 yard line the chaparrales in their red jerseys with blue numerals trimmed in red the silver pants the silver Westlake helmet with the red W in block lettering in red on the side of their helmets 
So Westlake off to a slow start and a big third down opportunity here for the Chaparrells. They line up with two wide receivers here to the near side right, one to the far side left. The back, it's Slaughter to the right of Siebert. Siebert out of the gun, looking, has time, fires to the near side, has man, that pass is caught, and it's very close to a first down. And the pass is caught by Sean Rawlings. We'll see if the, uh, it favors Westlake, and it will not. They're gonna mark Sean Rawlings out at the 41 yard line. He may have had the 42. It is very, very close. Yeah, I, I didn't think that he got it live, but I also, that also was not a favorable spot for Sean Rawlings. And let's see if Westlake goes for it or tries that pooch punt that we see so often. Fourth down and one, they'll get in an offensive formation. We'll see here, clap of the hands. And now it's like the officials are going to talk about it and it's going to be a timeout. We will take, we will take a, uh, we will keep it here actually folks with, we are just underway live from Chaparral Stadium. Let's go ahead and meet tonight's officials if we have the opportunity here with a brief break in the action. Tonight's officials, are brought to you by the Texas Honey Hand Company. Our referee is Brian Jones. Our umpire is Ron McClendon. Hector Rivero, the head linesman, and Rick Womble, the line judge, the man who blew the whistle and signaled the timeout for Westlake, and Mar Mike Martinez, the back judge. So again, a nice opportunity here to meet the officials, and of course, a gorgeous night for football. A little hot, not necessarily as humid, and right now, we have an opportunity to go down to the sidelines at Abe Garcia. Abe? Thanks, Joe. If you notice in the first couple of plays, they've been going away from James Judy, but if that's the case, the defensive backs have actually been playing off, so maybe look for Jordan Sievert to take advantage of that. On a side note, the Las Vegas Sportsbook and Casino actually texted me, and they said the over-under on John mentioning Baylor is three and a half. Very good. In the first half. We'll have to keep that in take mind. over on that. Fourth down <laughs> and one. As Westlake lines up with two wide receivers to the far side left, one here to the near side right as we are on live at KLGO AM 1490, the home of Baylor football here at Austin. Under center here, looking for a quick snap, and Jordan just falling forward, and he gets more than a yard. He gets two out to the 43-yard line, and he uses that six-foot-four frame to move the pile, and just like that, the Westlake Chaparrells gamble right at the 41-yard line and pick up two yards and a first down. Yeah, I like the play call there, too, by Jeff Rhodes. That's not something we see too often, even in short yardage situations from Westlake, despite Jordan Sievert being so large. So a great play call there and a huge first down early in this football game. Just inside the right hash mark here with two wide receivers to the far side left, one here to the near side right. Pistol formation here to the near side and a fake. Now a throw to the far sideline, and now Rawlings trying to make his way around the left side. The ball came out, and it looks like Temple may have had it. And it is, it's Temple Wildcat football as Sean Rawlings fumbles the football, ripping it out of his hand. At the end of the play was Deshaun Sellers and coming up with it is Dominique Thompson. A huge play here as we get a look at it on the television broadcast, a replay here in the booth and it looked like it was Thompson that ripped it up and perhaps Sellers that picked it up. So the first turnover of the ball game, the third fumble and third turnover for the Westlake Chaparrells here in the 2013 season. And just like that, Temple has the football. First down and 10 from the Chaparral 43 yard line on the right hash. Two wide receivers each way. President looking, three step drop, fires over the middle. That pass is caught to a wide open receiver. Making a cut and nicely done is D'Angelo Bell. Inside the 20, down to the 15 and he's finally brought down at the 14 yard line. Great route there by D'Angelo Bell, about a 12-yard route inside to the Westlake defense. They're in a zone, and he just went in between the two zones of the Westlake defense, and he is the guy to watch Bell on the outside for this Temple offense. A 29-yard pickup inside the red zone, and Chad President will hand it off to Jeff Carr. Carr to the left side. Carr at the 10, inside the 8, down to the 6-yard line. In fact, his knee will be down at the 7-yard line. A slew of tacklers there, including Daniel Aidman coming up the bottom of the pile. As you really see that linebacking core come to the near side and try to seal that gap and getting a hand on him first on the near side was Hudson Hall, but Aidman cleaned it up. Second down and three after a seven yard pickup here. Zone read, President's gonna keep it right at the gut and the six foot three, 195 pound junior is into the end zone for the game's first score. Touchdown, Temple. And that was just too easy there for the Wildcat offense. So many weapons that you have to account for, not only Chad President and Jeff Carr, but the receivers as well. Each of those positions getting into the action on this first drive for Temple, and Mr. President finishes it off. Cole Martin on for the extra point. The snap is down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 9-11 to play here in the opening quarter, following the fumble by Sean Rawlings, it's Temple 7, Westlake nothing. Live from Chaparral Stadium, this is Westlake football. On game days, you see me running out here with close to 100 other people. It's a team effort. It takes all of us to make UT football a success. It's a lot like you and your finances. 
you need to surround yourself with the best people in the business. That's where University Federal Credit Union comes in. The UFCU team works hard to make sure your financial game plan is always in shape. University of Texas Athletics and University Federal. So close, we share the same name. fumble as we welcome you back to Chaparral Stadium in Austin, Texas. The uh, scoring drive, three play, 43-yard drive. Took 44 seconds off the clock. A seven-yard touchdown run by Chad President. And for President, that is his first rushing touchdown of the season. First of many, most likely, after the skills he displayed. Here's Cole's kickoff. It'll be fielded by Rawlings. Rawlings at the 10, out to the 15, to the 20. Finds a seam and makes his way out to the 35-yard line, and he's down at the 36-yard line. So, again, not deterred at all, as averaging just over 25 yards of return is Sean Rawlings, and he does a good job out to the 36-yard line, and the Chaparrales will have to start all over on offense. Yeah, when you think about last week against Cedar Park and this week, starting out very similarly in that Cedar Park got a big punt return on their first uh, Westlake's first punt of the game and then the turnover so two short fields and two quick scores for Cedar Park similar story here Westlake's offense needs to drive down and respond early first down and 10 from their own 36 yard line power eye look in the backfield here is under center is Siebert he'll toss here to the near side to Chavez Chavez covering up the football falling forward to the 41 yard line out to the 42 tough running there just off the right side of the hash mark is Alex Chavez something they missed last series when they had to go with Slaughter and Rawlings in the backfield and obviously, Chavez provides that tough, tough running up the middle. A six-yard gain will be second down and four from the Chaparral 42-yard line. This time, a pistol formation, a receiver each way with a tight end, two tight ends in the formation as well, and Boykin, low snap with the handoff once again up the middle to Alex Chavez. Chavez picks up the first down, and he is in to Temple Wildcat territory down to the Wildcat 48-yard line. And that's just a great job there by that big Westlake offensive line just blowing open a hole for Ben Slaughter. Ten-yard pickup in the first down, 7-0 Wildcats lead on the seven-yard touchdown run by President. And just a straight give up the middle to Alex Chavez. Again, still having issues with the snap from center to quarterback. Bobby Dwyer still trying to work out those cobwebs and get together with his quarterback. They're doing a good job here of going under center and in the shotgun and in the pistol. The handoff, just a straight give on the power eye look here. Chavez once again knifing his way across the 45-yard line, down to the 44. A four-yard pickup there for Chavez, and it's second down and six. Getting Chavez a lot of work on this drive. It's important, obviously, to get this running game going because Jordan Sievert does so much better when they... When the defensive linemen are not just pinning their ears back and rushing the passer, Jordan Sievert really is able to get comfortable in the pocket. Second down and six, power eye look from the right hash mark at the Temple 44. Under center, Sievert, now a toss here to Chavez. Chavez off the left side, and uh, Sievert in front of him blocking, and he's met and met hard. A nice tackle there in the open field by D'Artagnan Say. Yes, his parents liked the Three Musketeers, and D'Artagnan Say checking in with his seventh tackle of the season, and he pops Chavez hard, but not before Chavez able to get to the 41-yard line. D'Artagnan, he will play pretty close to the line of scrimmage a lot of the time for a free safety, and very good in run support. 200 pounds, you don't often see a guy uh, in the, at the high school level, 200 pounds at the safety position, but he is a physical safety. Two wide receivers each way as they spread it out. Empty backfield, now Rawlings trying to communicate with his quarterback. Low snap here, and, and flags will fly. A lot of miscommunication from sideline to Sean Rawlings. He's trying to make sure that he has the right play, and you can see the miscommunication from here. Let's go down to the sidelines at Abe Garcia. Five yards, still third down. You know, Sean Rollins was trying to tell Jordan Seaver maybe to slow down a little bit, and he ended up snapping the ball. I don't know if that was the center or Jordan Seaver calling that, but they didn't get set. Coach Holland really upset. Going back to uh, the running game, Temple Wildcats are slapping the ball at all the running backs. Every hit, the helmets are going to the ball. They know that they're susceptible to turnovers and the fumbles. Be watching out for that. I know you guys can't see that on the radio, but I can see it from down here. Yeah, third down and three turns down into the third and eight after the false start. From the Temple 46-yard line, back to pass. Here comes the rush, but no, flags will fly here. And once again, it's another false start. Early movement for the Chaparrales. 
And this just absolutely kills drives. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. That's Brian Jones, the second time we have heard his voice call penalty against the Chaparrales. So what was once third down and three is now third down and 13, and the ball moves back into Chaparral territory at the 49-yard line. Yeah, third and three, you really have your playbook completely wide open. You can throw in the flat. You can even run the ball. You can throw deep. The Temple defense is really on their heels in that kind of situation. Now they have to know that a pass is coming from Jordan Siebert, and those D linemen will come hard. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far side right. Back to pass on a three-step drop. Jordan looking, has a man, looking downfield, firing downfield, one-on-one -on -one coverage, leaping up in the air, and coming down with the football. No, it's broken up. For a moment there, I thought, along with the Chaparral faithful, that Patrick Elliott had come down with the football. That was not the case, but Vedrick Gray are there on def the defensive as he made a nice, nice play, but you can see on the replay here, part of our telecast here on Time Warner Cable Sports Network, this broadcast replays at 9 a.m. on Sunday. Make sure you tune in. And it will be fourth down yet again. Punting time, no doubt, here. But we'll see with a short field. Backing up is Jordan Sievert. Looks like a pooch punt opportunity, and he fumbles the snap. Trying to get it off and does. It'll be a line drive punt, an actually almost disastrous punt. Turns into a pretty good one, and they will pin the Wildcats inside the 10-yard line, and it'll come to rest at the 6-yard line along the right hash. So a huge, huge break for the Westlake Chaparrales as once again, the quarterback of the center having trouble with that snap. That is extremely fortunate for Jordan Siebert. As long as he fumbled with that football in the backfield to not have a Temple Wildcat come in on him and block that punt, very lucky. And now Westlake's defense has a lar long field to work with, and they're going to need a stop here down 7-0. The one benefit of those false starts, it actually gave the defense some time to recuperate. And like John said, now with 94 yards in, in, at their backs, we'll see Chad President once again. The difference in the ballgame, a seven-yard touchdown run, and now just a swing pass here to the near side. And Jeff Carr trying to make a move to the 10 out to the 14-yard line, but a flag comes in late, and one of the Chaparrales lost a helmet on the far side of the field. The, the clock will stop at 5.45 here in the first quarter as we have Laundry on the field inside the five-yard line. Looked like Miles O'Connor's helmet came off. He'll have to come out of the game. Devontae Moore and Miles O'Connor getting into it. Yeah, Devontae just a huge offensive guard down there. Looks like he may have torn the helmet off of O'Connor. We'll see what Brian Jones has to say here. as we await the call from the referee. 5.45 to play here in the first quarter. The Wildcats up on the Chaparrales, seven to nothing here, courtesy of a Sean Rawlings fumble that Temple managed to recover on defense. Deshaun Sellers recovering the ball, and quite promptly, the Wildcats in three plays march 43 yards and a score. Personal foul against the offense. That foul will be enforced. Half of this to the goal from the end of the run. The replay first down. So it will be first down. He said at the end of the run, it'll be first down, but half the distance to the goal makes a good situation even better for the Chaparral defense once again. Temple committing a mental error, if you will, as they are a hyped up bunch, not only on the offensive line, but on the defensive line as well. We've seen a lot of emotion from the Temple Wildcats. From their own eight yard line, it'll be second down. Or excuse me, first down. And Chad President will keep it on a quarterback keeper. President at the 15, shakes a tackle at the 20, to the 25, 30, picks up the first down. He's at the 30, still on his feet at the 35, and finally out of bounds just outside the 36-yard line. And they will call him out of bounds at his own 37. A nice game there for Chad President, another 29-yard pickup for the Wildcat offense. And I'll tell you what I love about that play, just from the perspective of a guy who loves football and loves great effort. D'Angelo Bell, the wide receiver there, had a Westlake defender all the way downfield at the 50-yard line and pinned him on his back. On first down, it'll be Carr taking out of the backfield. Carr at the 40 to the 45. Gets a seam into Westlake territory and knifes his way through a pair of tacklers. And momentum carries Andreo and Carr out of bounds as Carr stepped out of bounds just outside the 40. But they will give the nose of the football and the left hash mark to the Wildcats at the Chaparral 40-yard line. So a nice pickup of 23 yards and another Wildcat first down. Dominant performance here on offense so far. Two wide receivers to the far side right and one here to the near side left, and the whistles blow. Yeah, the ball is actually not spotted correctly here. They're going to move it back a yard to the 41-yard line. And that's where the first down marker will be. They're actually going to move it up, yep. actually. It's not on the 41. It's on the 40. So the chain gang gets 
set at the 40-yard line in Chaparral territory. Shotgun set for President, three wide receivers, and he's going to run it. President at the 35 to the 30, and he's brought down inside the 30-yard line at the 29. And bringing down President there is Tate Shaw coming up from his safety position to make that tackle. You have Hudson Hall right there coming upfield to stop the outside option play. And Chaz, Chad President just cuts in inside on the right side of the line. And Hudson Hall could not get back, back quick enough to catch the speedy President. An 11 yard pickup for President as he's done a lot of the damage with his feet so far. Three wide receivers to the far side right, one here to the near side left. And it's Stefan Love lined up on an island with Rhodes' leg. Motion man here going to the near side, and the handoff will stay with President. They swing it out here to the near side to True Love. True Love inside the 25-yard line, down to the 20, and he picks up positive yardage down to the 19-yard line. Luke Womack along with Rhodes' leg. And a nice job there by really True Love coming down the line of scrimmage in a misdirection play there, adding to his concentration. It'll be a nine-yard pickup, second and one, and whistles fly. I should say whistles blow and flags fly. We'll see what this one is all about. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Make sure to follow us at Westlake Sports on Twitter. That's at Westlake Sports or dial up Facebook, facebook.com slash Westlake Sports. You can follow the action on social media. And, of course, you can listen to us live on the Westlake Shap app on your iPhone or Apple devices. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the near side left. The handoff will go to Carr for the first time tonight. A nice play on defense there with a running game as it only goes a yard. And at the bottom of that pile is Ryan O'Farrell. John Ryan O'Farrell getting an opportunity to tackle Carr as he ran into traffic right at the 25, John. And now Westlake has an opportunity to maybe get off the field, although Temple would probably go for it. But a third down. Third down and five, misdirection play. President will keep it. And President very close to the 20-yard line, but he is a yard shy of the first down. Yeah, and with a, a backup kicker starting tonight in Cole Martin, the sophomore, expect Temple to probably go for this on fourth and a long one. Yeah, Jonathan Unruh, an injury, and he is done for the year, so it is Cole Martin, the sophomore show, but they're going to go for it here on fourth down and one from the Chaparral 21. The handoff will go to Carr. Carr hit initially behind the line of scrimmage, but he squirts forward along that right hash mark and picks up three yards at a first down. Right now, Darren Allman along with the defensive coordinator, Jason Jones, just trying to find a way to get off the field for the Chaparrales. First down and 10 from the Chaparral 12-yard line. 7-0 lead here for the Wildcats in the first quarter. Handoff, Carr. Carr with a shifty move at the 20-yard line. Cuts his way back into the 15-yard line. And inside the 10, down to the 9. And Jeff Carr really showing what he is all about. And probably a bright sign here is that his helmet came off in that play. He'll have to take a seat for at least one play as Daniel Aidman checks in for the Chaparrales on defense. That was just such an impressive run at 5'7", 165. He's so hard to get a hold of, and he just uh, worked his way by some Westlake defenders there. An eight-yard gain, second down and two. President looking to throw, has time, going to the end zone, has a man, and that pass is tipped out of bounds. A nice play on the far side by Tate Shaw. Tate Shaw comes up with a nice play intended in the back of the end zone there for Eric Ourismendi. Ourismendi, the hybrid tight end wide receiver, and an incomplete pass for Chad President, and it's third down and two. President flanked by True Love, two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. And now President trying to knife his way up the middle, still on his feet inside the five, down to the four-yard line, and he's finally brought down at the two. A slew of tacklers there at the bottom of the pile for the Westlake Chaparrales. And President just using his elusiveness and, of course, a big, big offensive line. Once again, Tate Shaw applying the pressure. It'll be first and goal for the Temple Wildcats. President just trying to lean forward and leaning towards the line of scrimmage and towards the goal line. And President is in for the second time tonight. Chad President using that six foot three frame, just pushing his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Temple. And this Temple offense is really a well oiled machine in the second week, second game of the season in week one. Just really impressive performance so far in this first quarter. Martin on for the extra point. Out of the hold of True Love. Snap is down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 3.10 to play here in the opening quarter, it's all Temple. The Wildcats 14, Westlake nothing. This is Westlake football. Beyond companionship, there are other reasons we call dog man's best friend. For years, dogs have been trained to detect all kinds of things, like bed bugs. ABC's bed bug dog can detect bed bugs in the smallest cracks and crevices 
at any stage of development with amazing accuracy, even more accurate than the most skilled pest specialist. And accurate detection means quicker, more cost-effective elimination. If you suspect a bed bug problem, call us, ABC Home and Commercial Services, specialists for your environment. Well, normally cats eat birds, and that's exactly what's happening right now. The Temple Wildcats up big. Two scores here in the opening quarter, both of them belonging to Chad President. 12 plays, 94 yards. The length of the field took 2 minutes and 43 seconds to do it. A one-yard touchdown run by Chad President. And Cole Martin to kick it off from right to left for the third time, and this time it's going to go to Rhodes' leg. Leg at the 15 to the 20, uses his speed to the 30, out to the 35-yard line, and once again, a solid return as the 35 to the 36 yard line has been average field position start for the Chaparral offense. And once again, they're gonna have to try and keep this drive going, give their defense an opportunity to rest a bit. A long 12 play route of the defense by the Temple Wildcats in that scoring drive. 14 to nothing, Temple over Westlake with 3.04 to play here in the first quarter. Joe Taylor, John Nidell, Abe Garcia down on the sidelines. Our producer tonight is Mike Pirtle. Our associate producer is Cameron Walker. A wide receiver each way out of the pistol formation. Chavez up the middle, stepping his way out to the 41-yard line. And a nice pickup there. Once again, Alex Chavez seems to be the answer up front as he knifes his way through the defense. Nice blocking up front by the offensive line. Yeah, this is just such a big drive for Westlake. We've talked about Mac Mike Spradlin serving as an assistant coach under Art Bryles at Houston that you can really tell with the way their offense is moving the ball. Under center, a quick snap here. Chavez once again with the call. Chavez close to the 45-yard line and a first down, and he picks it up. Coming across and making the pop once again, Ty McCorkle. Back-to-back -back tackles for McCorkle in there as well was Dominique Thompson. Thompson, just an impressive linebacker. You can really tell he's got a motor underneath him. Every bit of 5'11", and that 210 might not be enough. He's a big-looking inside linebacker. First down and 10, they spread it out. Two wide receivers each way and a lone backfield and a false start as flags come in on Wesley. Yeah, some movement there on the left side of the line. So once again, you're trying to establish rhythm. You saw the quick snap. You've seen three different formations, John. And when stuff like that happens, it really just slows everything down, like you mentioned earlier. 2.24 to play here in the opening quarter, and the Chaparral's just trying to keep things going. First down and 15 from their own 40-yard line. Ball marked on the right hash. Jordan with four wides in the package, looking, has a man downfield, and that pass is caught by Rawlings. Rawlings at the 40, tried to shake him down and couldn't get him down. Rawlings inside the 30, inside the 20, down to the 15 before he's finally knocked out of bounds by a slew of tacklers. Leading the charge was Ladarius Thomas, but Sean Rawlings comes up with a 44-yard reception from Jordan Siebert, first down, and just like that, the Chaparrells are inside the red zone. The ball marked at the Temple 19-yard line. Great throw there by Jordan Siebert. And Sean Rawlings shows his speed. A quick snap under center. Siebert hands it off to Chavez. Chavez right up the gut inside the 15-yard line, trying to slice this lead in half. You can see now, looks like Jeff Rhodes, along with Darren Allman, trying to just organize their way down the field. We've seen a number of different formations in the backfield and some quick snaps after big plays. Yeah, and you just feel the way this Temple offense is going that you really have to play uh, catch-up and you have to score, you're gonna feel like, on every single possession. An eight yard pickup for Chavez, second down and two. Here's the play action, Jordan looking. Now here comes the pressure. Jordan trying to get rid of it, and he does. He is outside of the tackle box. The flag has not been thrown, so it will not be intentional grounding. I thought maybe he had not gotten out of the tackle box there, but it looks like right on top of the play, John, was Brian Jones and they are going to let that play stand, and it'll be third down and two. Yeah, one hop there to Ben Slaughter. So he was in the tackle box, and the line, the ball also did not cross the line of scrimmage, but because Slaughter was in the area, no intentional grounding. So third down and two here after good, good pressure. Nice coverage on the back side of the defense there, and what a tandem. Clint Cole, Vader Grayer, they were all over the Westlake would-be receivers as Alex Chavez checks in. And now with 109 to play in the opening quarter, you're thinking about just picking up these two yards, John. 
yeah, it's absolutely crucial here for Westlake to get a first down, and no doubt if they're faced with a fourth and short scenario, you'd probably go for it again. Kenny in front of Chavez. Under center is Jordan Siebert, the men in red. It looks like Darren Allman's trying to rally his troops here as they're backing off the ball. The play clock has stopped. They had a clock issue. Had yep. about 15 seconds back on the game clock. So now they've reset that. And they put what looks to be 15 seconds back on the game clock, like John said, 124 now instead of 109. Third down and two here, power eye look under center is Jordan Siebert. The toss here to the near side to Chavez. A big call there and down to the 10 to the nine yard line and that's a first down run. And it looks like coming in from the side there, the spot will be favorable. They needed right around the nine and a half yard line and it looks like Alex Chavez has picked up the first down. If they do, it's huge. First and goal, the clock will stop with 1.15 to play in the opening quarter. And they're gonna call an official timeout. We will keep it here. And while we have an opportunity here, let's go down to the sidelines at Abe Garcia. Abe? Yeah, Joe, I think Alex Chavez might be a little bit short on, on that run. It looks like they didn't get a favorable spot if they're coming to uh, From our vantage point, it does Abe. look like well, he, he got, got a first down. He so it. it looks like they needed right around that middle ground, that Abe. So a good call, it could have gone either way, really, when you think about it. So it, uh, an average spot there between the 10 and the 9 was going to get it done, and it does by half a length of a football. So it'll be first and goal here, Westlake, with a 14 to nothing deficit here in the first quarter, trying to cut that lead in half, and they do so here from the Temple nine yard line. The ball marked on the right hash. The huddle breaks, and in the pistol are the Chaparrells with three ride receivers to the far side left. Rolling left is Jordan. A nice pickup on the blitz there. Firing towards the end zone, and that pass is caught. It's caught for a touchdown. Patrick Elliott has his first touchdown of the 2013 campaign. The senior wide receiver goes low and comes up with six. Touchdown, Westlake. We talked about it last year, but Jordan Sieber actually throws his best ball when he's rolling out to his left, which is a little awkward sometimes for a right-handed quarterback. But you see it here, throws low, and a really just a dark pass to Patrick Elliott in an area where he had to put it or else the defender would have been able to either intercept or to get a hand on it. Great throw and great catch there by Patrick Elliott. Out of the hold of Rawlings, the snapper is Andrew Zucker. He'll handle the point after touchdowns. Here's Dallin Nelson. The snap is down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. With 107 to play here in the opening quarter, Westlake slices into the lead. It's Temple 14, Westlake 7. This is Westlake football. For 102 years, the Coverts have set the standard for car dealers in Central Texas. Hi, I'm Jenny Covert, and your parents, grandparents, and even some of your great-grandparents have shopped with my family. Our service, our inventory, and of course, our low Covert price are the reasons over one million customers come back again and again. We want to be your car dealer. Let us prove it. Covert Auto Group, Austin, Bastrop, and Hutto. Patrick Elliott coming up with a nine-yard touchdown reception as he dove for it in the Temple end zone. A seven-play, 65-yard drive. Took one minute and 57 seconds off the game clock. And just before the first quarter comes to an end, the Chaparral is able to get on the board. Temple with a seven-point lead now, 14-7, as Westlake will kick off left to right. We'll go down to the sidelines in just a moment as the conditions have changed just a bit. As we moved into the top of the hour, you're listening to live coverage of Westlake football on KLGO 1490 AM Austin, Texas. And taking it on the hand on the reception from the kickoff is Davion Curtis. Curtis still on his feet across the 20-yard line out to the 23. Let's go down to the sidelines to Abe Garcia. Abe, 
Wind picking up just a little bit. Just a little bit. How's the hair, babe? It looks good. Strong. As you look behind me, the, the flag that actually like started picking up and swirling a little bit. There's some dark clouds kind of hovering over the stadium. I checked the weather. It doesn't look like any rains in the forecast, but the wind has picked up. Let's see if that's a factor in the game for the passing game for both teams. One thing to consider the at this point in time, the way you saw the flags on our television broadcast and the way we're describing it coming from a south to north trajectory here right now at least for the next 60 seconds chad president and the temple wildcats will have the wind at their back and he's taking advantage of it and that pass is caught by stefan love love with a first down catch out to the 41 yard line a nice pick up there out to the 41 inside 52 seconds to play here in the opening quarter yeah just a nice play there by president patiently waiting for love to make his break and Rhodes' leg, actually that's Bennett Huddleston playing a little soft there on the outside. 17 yard pickup there and a timeout's been called. We'll go ahead and keep it here and not too sure. I think right now if, if you are Mike Spradlin, you've got to be able to think about your opportunities here. It doesn't matter. Chad President can throw the ball. He's got a heck of an arm right now. The timeout's been called by Westlake and John, when you think about it, this is a huge advantage. As the wind has kicked up, it's definitely going to be a downfield opportunity, but what's important to remember about the wind situation now it's kicked up to about an 18 to 21 mile an hour wind and it is coming technically in from the southeast blowing towards the home sideline and the home stands here at chaparral stadium so it's not necessarily wind at their back it's a crosswind coming across the field at a diagonal so if you think about it in your mind's eye it's going from the left goal post in Temple's end zone to the right goal post in Westlake's end zone if you're looking at it from south to north here at Chaparral Stadium. 52 seconds remaining out of the timeout. Westlake visiting about the defense and they will have four down linemen here as they go into a nickel situation. First down and 10 from the 41 yard line. President flushed out of the pocket, fires to the sideline and it is a wide open wide receiver and he makes the grab. And on the far side of the field is Ares Mendy. Mendy with the grab and a first down to the 46-yard line as he sidestepped that and tightrope to that sideline, and he made the grab. It was a 13-yard pickup at a first down. Now 44 seconds with two wide receivers here to the near side, one to the far side. Now a swing pass, flag on the play, and this one's going to go to Carr. Carr spins out of one tackle but goes down at the 44-yard line. Yeah, Daniel, and, and, Daniel Aidman there on the end of the line was just lined up offsides, had his helmet hovering over the ball when the ball was snapped, so it's going to be offsides on Westlake. Andreo at the back end of that play along with Hudson Hall. And we'll see what Brian Jones has to say about it. Looks like he might have already said it. Nope, here's his piece. Offsides on the defense, number 44. Five-yard penalty. We'll replay first down. And somebody better tell Brian Jones you're not allowed to call out uniforms in high school say. again. <laughs> well, you know, we knew who it was, but at the end of the day, it doesn't need to be embarrassed in front of 8,000 strong. First down and 10 from the 39-yard line. Excuse me, first down and five after that penalty. Three wide receivers here to the near side left, two to the far side right. Lonely backfield here for President as he surveys the defense for the Westlake Chaparrales. Four down linemen, the men in red coming with an opportunity here to really put this game in a difficult situation here before they get the win in their face. And that time, President swings it out here to the near side, and that pass is overthrown and incomplete, intended for Jeff Carr. As they were looking to get the young athlete, the junior, with a sparkling debut in his first game against Round Rock, the program's 700th win, and Jeff Carr definitely played his part. 18 carries for 100 yards, three touchdowns running the ball, including the game winner. And now on second down and five, President will keep the ball. He busts it to the outside. Or excuse me, Jeff Carr getting the carry to the outside. That zone replay yet again. And he works his way to the outside part of the field, just outside the numbers inside the 35-yard line, down to about the 33-and-a-half-yard line. And it is just good enough for a first down. 14-7 to seven with five seconds remaining in the first quarter. And it looks like this is going to be the final play. And that will do it for the first quarter of action here from Chaparral Stadium. And it's been an eventful one, 21 points on the board. Temple with 14 first quarter points. Westlake just getting in on the board in their last drive. So Temple 14, Westlake 7. That'll do it for one quarter of play. Live from Chaparral Stadium, this is Westlake Football. At age 40, attorney and Marine Corps reservist David Little was the picture of health until the left side of his body went completely numb. We were on the phone while he was driving home when he suddenly stopped talking. My dad had a stroke when he was driving me home. 
I'm just really glad he ended up at St. David's South Austin. St. David's South Austin saved my life. Do you know what to do in an emergency? Visit stdavids.com to learn more. This winter, prepare to be amazed as Elisa's Dance Academy and the Westlake Symphonic Orchestra come together to perform a variety of holiday favorites. From Tchaikovsky to Jingle Bell Rock, audiences will be astounded by concert quality music and dramatic visual effects in a stunning production perfect for all ages. Join us December 12th, 13th, and 14th as the Westlake Technical Entertainment Crew and Lexus of Austin present The Nutcracker Spectacular. Welcome back to Chaparral Stadium, 14 to 7. Temple with the lead as 21 points go up on the board. Joe Taylor alongside John Nidelli, Garcia down on the sidelines. Mike Pirtle, our engineer, our associate producer tonight, is Cameron Walker. Our statistician is Brian Ferguson. And of course, on the television side, all the good folks at Westlake Technical and Entertainment crew, led by David Poole, Jeff Strange, and Dale Baker. The kids are shooting mighty fine already this evening as we are off to a very interesting start here as Westlake down seven. But now the wind in the face of the Temple Wildcats as President surveys his options here on defense on first down and 10 from the Chaparral 34. Here comes the rush by Andreo. Andreo trying to get to him, can't do it. And there's the pass, it's complete to Jeff Carr, but a huge hit by Rhodes' leg. He's down at the, about the 31 yard line, but a flag has been thrown. Yeah, it's gonna be a legal man downfield, I believe, one of those linemen, actually a couple of those linemen, uh, when Chad President rolled out to the right, uh, kind of worked their way downfield, so this penalty, Westlake will probably take this penalty, we'll see. Ineligible downfield against the offense number 60. Be a five yard penalty, previous spot, we'll replay first down. So it will stay first down, back up the offense for Temple. A Little bit favorable position, but what a hit by Rhodes' leg, making his presence known in a perfect textbook style of tackling. You heard Darren Allman talk about it in our pregame show. It'll be first down and 15 empty backfield. Who comes the rush? And now that is picked off. It's picked off. Westlake has it at the 50 to the 40. And Rhodes Leg is going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Westlake. Touchdown, Rhodes Leg. We just talked about how he executed a perfect textbook tackle on the play before. And this time, Rhodes Leg, right spot, right time, using his speed. Touchdown, Westlake. And Westlake had been looking for answers on defense all first quarter, and all it took was the turn of the quarter. Second quarter happened, you had two plays. Westlake finally able to bring some pressure and get pressured on Chad President. In both plays, Westlake was successful. And you have the huge play there by Rhodes Leg. He really has turned into that Derek Cohen type of playmaker just in a short game and a quarter, really. Uh, an impressive play there by Rhodes Leg. And now we are close to being tied, and it looks like the snap, the snap is down, the kick is up, and just like that, it is a tie ball game. 11.41 to go in the second quarter, and it's all four teams on the board. This is Westlake football. We certainly don't have to be at our best for the season right now, but we want to be as good as we can be right now, and uh, to do that, you've got to play mistake-free football. We're playing extremely hard, and we're playing fast, and uh, we've got to get in shape uh, to play against these fast-tempo offenses, and uh, and with a Temple team uh, like we're facing this week, uh, they've got so much speed on the field. Uh, you know, it's really going to help us grow, and we're going to play a, a team that's probably as fast as anybody will see all year. A 70-yard interception return for a touchdown after a textbook tackle on the near side on Jeff Carr. Pressure on the quarterback, Chad President. The ball got tipped up in the air. A play later, Rhodes' leg comes down with the pick six. 70 yards, Rhodes' leg really making his presence felt. His second interception of the season in his second varsity game, and thank goodness for transfers from St. Andrews. Kicking it off here is Dallin Nelson, gonna drive the 
kick returner back inside the four yard line and bringing it out here for the uh, Temple Wildcats is Davion Curtis. Curtis still on his feet at the 15 yard line and he's brought down there at the 17 yard line. Nice job there by Mac Kelly. Call up from the junior varsity with the injury to Jack Meredith. They really shored up the defensive back. They need the depth. Do the Westlake Chaparrales. It'll be first down and 10 here in a tie ball game right at the 19 yard line here in Temple territory. And John, you talked about it during the break. Now, the Temple Wildcats have to make their adjustments as obviously on defense, the Westlake Chaparral started to put pressure on Chad President. That's right, it's gonna turn into a chess match now. You have the offensive coordinator for Temple, and then of course, Jason Jones and Darren Allman running this Westlake defense. Two wide receivers to the far side left, one here to the near side right. One back flanking President. Now motion is true love here down the uh, line of scrimmage. The handoff will go to Carr. Ooh. Carr is brought down and this will be a face mask. Incidental content, contact I believe, it looked like it just happened to be at the right time as Carr was making his way across the line of scrimmage, but this is no doubt a face mask. We'll have to see if this is a personal foul or just that con incidental contact. That's what I believe it's going to be. This will definitely be a personal foul. That was a violent, violent takedown. Yep. First down. First down. Automatic first down, and that's Hank Dickerson. At least that's exactly who Brian Jones identified as the guilty party there. First down and 10 from the Temple 36-yard line, so a big break there for President. Three wide receivers in the package. Two here to the near side right, one to the far side left. Carr flanking President on the left side. Here's the snap, and the President will keep it on the zone read to the 40, out to the 41-yard line, to the 43 before falling down there. Tackling led by the Westlake Chaparrales coming in on the near side and making that hit is Harrison Lines, who's getting an opportunity to play defense. And I'm not blind, that is Harrison Lines wearing number 17. So again, a lot of different looks here on defense as Lines getting his opportunity on the defensive side of the ball. Six yard gain for President, second down and four. Now looking for the screen pass is President. President running out of room, flushed here to the near side to the 45 and he'll step out of bounds at the 47 yard line. And right there on him was Hudson Hall. But stepping out of bounds and stopping the clock here with 10.38 to play. Now the clock will start moving just outside the 45-yard line to the 46. So a nice gain there on second down and sets up third down and one here for the uh, Temple Wildcats just outside the 46-yard line. They bring in the big blocking back, Chris Minter. So you expect to see a give here. We'll see what they what they do. Ars Mendy, a tight end to the right, and they'll go with the zone read. The handoff will go to Carr. Carr with a huge first down run. Bounces it to the left hash mark inside Westlake territory down to the 43-yard line. And a nice run there. The give and go from President to Carr, and it's working quite nicely. A first down run there. All tied at 14 here from Chaparral Stadium. 10-15 to play here in the first half. Luke Womack's going to go off the field. It looks like he's okay, but he took a shot to the knee and luckily he's able to walk off his own power and now the play action president looking has time fires over the middle that pass is incomplete a lot of ricocheting does that football and a lot of chaparrales around it Rhodes leg there again but could not see the football and andreo there as well or andreo we're still debating on whether or not we're going to call him andreo or andreo we're going to go with andreo until his mom tells me otherwise second down and 10 from the 42 yard line as an incomplete pass there haven't been many of those tonight for chad president but he threw his first interception early in the second quarter and it went for six and now flags come in and we'll get a listen to brian jones ball starts offense five yard penalty still second down and now temple the team that is shooting themselves in the foot on offense. That's really what this Westlake defense needs to slow down this Temple offense. It's mistakes by the Wildcats. We saw it with the turnover, now with the penalty to bring up second and long. Second down and 15, President looking, has time, stays in the pocket, fires to the far sideline, and that pass is caught. Nice gain there to the 35-yard line, so it'll be a manageable third down here for the Temple Wildcats on the far side of the field. Just a nicely thrown ball on the outside and an even better catch by Stephon Love, his second reception of the night. Third down and three 
after the 12-yard pickup. The handoff will go to Carr. Carr with first down yardage and more. Bounces it outside the number, still on his feet. And he steps out of bounds inside the 25-yard line, down to the 23. It looks like they're going to mark him out of bounds at the 24-yard line. First down and 10 here for Temple as they overcome that second down and 15 with two straight plays. And that looks to be their go-to play on those third down and fourth down in short situations. Just that give off the left side where that big Darius Joyner on the left side of the line is. From the Chaparral 24, they swing it out here to True Love. And check that, it's actually going to be Mar Marcus Hatcher. Marcus Hatcher with the catch out of the flat inside the 15-yard line. That's where he's basically his forward progress was halted before being backed up to the 19-yard line by a slew of Westlake tacklers. But Hatcher getting the call out of the backfield, gets the swing pass, a nice block up field there to ice Andreo out of the play. But a second down and one. And the handoff will go inside to Hatcher. Hatcher down to the 10-yard line. And that'll be a first down run on second down and one for Hatcher. And you can see Hatcher really the bigger of the two backs by far as number 28 has gotten into the ball game and made his presence known. Temple with their own 28, and he's a bulldog runner as well, just like Alex Chavez, his counterpart for the Chaparrells. First down and 10, the ball marked the 11-yard line in Chaparral territory. And now Hatcher will get the turn again. He'll try to turn the left corner and does. Inside the five, down to the four, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Marcus Hatcher. Touchdown, Temple. And Temple answers with a touchdown drive of their own in the form of Marcus Hatcher. His first touchdown run of the season. Touchdown, Temple. Tackling an issue on that drive for the Westlake Chaparrells. The Temple's offense, you know, we talk about big playability, and they have it, but they had a 12-play drive on the last touchdown drive and then a long touchdown drive here as well. Out of the hole, the high snap. True Love able to corral it, put it down for Martin, and the kick after the touchdown is good. 8.59 to play here in the first half, and the Wildcats strike back. It's Temple 21, Westlake 14. This is Westlake football. At age 40, attorney and Marine Corps reservist David Little was the picture of health until the left side of his body went completely numb. We were on the phone while he was driving home when he suddenly stopped talking. My dad had a stroke when he was driving me home. I'm just really glad he ended up at St. David's South Austin. St. David's South Austin saved my life. Do you know what to do in an emergency? Visit stdavids.com to learn more. The Steam Team, your number one choice for cleaning residential and commercial carpet, tile, and wood flooring, upholstery, air ducts, and more, including 24-hour emergency water and fire damage restoration. The Steam Team is an Austin original, locally owned and operated since 1983. All employees are trained and certified by the Institute of Inspection, Cleaning, and Restoration. We guarantee our services and will do whatever it takes to please our customers. Call 451-TEAM or online at thesteamteam.com. We welcome you back to Chaparral Stadium. An impressive drive there. Nine plays, 81 yards. Took three minutes and 31 seconds off the second quarter clock. An 11-yard touchdown run by Marcus Hatcher. And for Hatcher, his first rushing touchdown of the season for Temple. And it gives them the edge yet again. The Wildcats leading the Chaparral's 21 to 14. As Westlake will have to try to answer here with nine minutes, just under nine minutes to play in the first half. It'll be Martin to kick it off here. Waiting back patiently is Sean Rawlings along with Tate Shaw and Rhodes Leg. A right leg into it, a line drive kick. It'll be fielded by Rawlings at the 11 yard line. Number 11 has it at the 15 to the 20, out to the 25 to the 30 before he's brought down right at the 30 yard line. So a nice play there by Rawlings just to bring it out to about the 31. And once again, Westlake's gonna have to answer here and hopefully answer in a slow, methodical drive here, trying to suck some time off that second quarter clock, John. Absolutely right. You know, as, as much time as Westlake's defense has spent on the field in the last few drives, it's very important for Westlake now to drive down the field. Like you said, take some time off the clock and punch it in the end zone. They'll move right to left here in their second drive officially of the second quarter. A power eye look, Jordan Siebert with the handoff to Chavez. Chavez hit right at the 32 yard line, but falls forward to the 33. Let's go down to the sidelines and Abe Garcia. That's so what people are used to seeing from Temple there on that last drive. Instead of using the quarterback, he's Chad President. They use their running game because Westlake's that, you know, really doing a really good job in pass coverage. They were able to answer on the running game. And like John says, Westlake needs a good drive here, take some time off the clock, and they're using the running game like always. Hopefully they'll get the lead and tie the game here at 21. 
Now Slaughter going in motion on the backfield. It's an option play. The pitch will go to Rawlings. Rawlings with room on the right side. Bounces it to the numbers. Out past the 35-yard line to the 40. And he falls down just on the 41-yard line side of the 40-yard line. They're going to give him that 40-and-a-half yard, if you will. Maybe the extra push of the football there. The nose of it at the 41-yard line along the right hash. So a nice nine-yard pickup there. Actually, it's pretty close to a first down. They're going to go ahead and call it. It's a first down. They put that third down marker up briefly, but it's enough for the first. First down and 10 is Westlake with 8.05 to play here in the first half. Picks up the first down at their own 41. Going in motion out of the backfield is Slaughter. The handoff will go to Rawlings. Rawlings trying to drive his way up the middle, and there is no room to run for Sean Rawlings. A great play up front there, and leading the way for the Wildcat defense up front is D'Artagnan Say. Really just busts his way out of the safety spot and comes in and makes one of the initial hits. Sellers as well in there on the play. And once again, Dominique Thomas everywhere around the ball carrier. Yeah, Westlake now in a second down and long situation. You know that it's all about execution right here. Just don't, don't commit penalties, don't turn the ball over, and this offense will be okay. Under center, the toss will go to the near side out of the power eye. Chavez looking for some room, and he has some across the 45-yard line out to the 46. At the bottom of that pile is James Judy, and it's important to note that somebody in Austin has taken a strong look at the senior defensive end at 6'4", 241 pounds. Had four tackles, one of them behind the line of scrimmage a week ago against Round Rock and the University of Texas looking at big number 99. Yeah, he's the kind of guy that is a really great guy to bring on and just say, all right, come on, work your way in, see if you can make this football team. And he has the, the size and the frame and the athleticism to possibly make some impact down the road in the college program. Chavez splitting out to the far side of the field on third down and five. It's a big one. Jordan looking, has some room. He's going to tuck it and run, trying to shake up out of the would-be tackler. But unfortunately, he is unable to do so. And a nice play there defensively for the Temple Wildcats is coming up is Michael Hicks. Making the stop there is Michael Hicks. And it'll be a fourth down situation here. You can tell Jordan, in not only in game one, but here tonight, his first real opportunity to tuck and run. And the senior quarterback showing some hesitation, always keeping his eyes downfield. And a big part of his game before his senior year was making plays with his feet. He's going to back it up and pooch punt this on fourth and two with 6.09 to play first half. He'll pooch it, and his punt kind of knuckles a little bit, but it'll be caught at the 25-yard line. And unless my eyes deceive me, that's D'Artagnan Say. Not often do you see his name written down as a punt returner, but he is the one there underneath the football that made the grab at the 26. They moved the ball out to the 28-yard line, so now it'll be the Wildcats to take over. So positive yardage lost and positive movement along the Westlake offensive line and, of course, the offensive unit as a whole unable to come up with a first down run and now Temple will get an opportunity here to put, once again, more distance between them and the Chaparrales here at Chaparral Stadium in Austin. And this is not a dangerous time only because Temple has the opportunity to go up 14, but remember, Wesley got the ball first, so Temple has an opportunity to score as well in the second half. And a fumbled snap there, trying to bring him down in the backfield, and this pass is gonna be caught. President got it out to True Love, trying to rip the football, or the defenders, and it was a pretty good opportunity there for Miles O'Connor to strip that football, but it will be a face mask nonetheless. We'll see, and it was. Reaching up was Aidman. Aidman trying to get to the quarterback, Chad President, and he came down with a fistful of face mask. And it will be a penalty against Westlake, the second face mask penalty tonight on the Chaparrales. Personal foul, face mask against the defense. The 15 yard penalty, automatic. First down. So once again, even though pressure was coming on President and looked like Westlake was in a position to make a good play in the backfield, it backfires on him with a face mask and a 15-yard penalty. And as you heard Brian Jones, our referee, say, an automatic first down and actually puts the ball into Chaparral territory at the 48-yard line. Two wide receivers to the far side left, one here to the near side right. Now President with the zone read. President's going to keep it, looking, firing downfield, and that pass is caught. What a catch by Stephon Love, and it's good for a 12-yard pickup and a first down as Love elevated over the defenders and made the grab. First down, Tipple. 
just such an impressive play there by Chad President. You could see him bring his eye level down to look at where the Westlake rushers were and then immediately look up and fire the football. Really impressive awareness by President. 36-yard line here in Chaparral territory. The handoff will go to Carr. Carr just a stutter step around to the right side. Bounces it outside to the numbers inside the 25-yard line before he's upended there. Tate Shaw, among others, along with Rhodes' leg there to upend him inside the 25-yard line, down about the 23, and it's another first down as Carr really showing his shiftiness in the open field. And they have the ability to attack you really in any way you can think of on the offensive side of the ball, so it's just such a hard offense to defend. First down and 10 from the Chaparral 23-yard line. President with the zone read, the handoff to Carr. Carr working his way across the line of scrimmage before he's met there by Hudson Hall along with three other defenders. And once again, another flag comes in That's... at the end of the play, and Miles O'Connor loses his helmet. It's going to be a personal foul on, I guess that is O'Connor, simply for playing after losing your helmet. That's a, a new rule in the last couple of years. Once you lose your helmet, you can no longer pursue the play. you got to take yourself out of the play, uh, which, you know, safety has been the big buzzword in football over the last few years. And um, that's one, certainly, you don't want a guy putting his head in there or getting blindsided when his helmet is off. So I understand that rule, and that's why, unfortunately, it's great effort there by O'Connor, but he's going to get the, the personal foul penalty. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Westlake, number 40, continuing to play with his helmet off. The penalty is half of it to the goal, an automatic first down. Brian Jones seconding our own official upstairs, and it's almost like we have an extra official in the booth with us. And John Nidell right on the money, half the difference to the goal, and it's first and goal from the Westlake eight yard line. President in the backfield, calling Arizmendi off the slot back to his tight end position. The handoff will go to Marquise Hatcher, Marcus Hatcher. Hatcher hovering around the line of scrimmage, doesn't get much. In fact, no gain right at the eight yard line. It'll be second down and goal. I do wish on that, on that call they would change it and not call it an unsportsmanlike conduct. It's not unsportsmanlike <laughs> at all. There's a lot of sport in it. Right. A lot of effort, like you said. Miles O'Connor just trying to finish the play and play to the whistle. Might invest in new snaps on that helmet. Speaking of snaps, here's President on second and goal. President running out of real estate, and he's dropped the six-yard line. Nice opportunity there. Getting into the mix for the Westlake Chaparrales is Kanan Clark Bateman, one of the backup linebackers, getting some playing time, splitting it with Brecken Hager. You can see Bateman really there along with Aidman coming in on the back end of the play and really sealing the deal, I believe, on the far side was Bennett Huddleston. Third down and goal from the six-yard line here. Big play for Westlake inside. Four minutes to play in the first half, down by seven. Bell going in motion, and now President looking. Still looking, still looking. Comes to the right side, and he has to throw it away. And President falls out of bounds. And a nice pursuit there by Hudson Hall, but there is a flag down in the end zone about two yards deep. Nobody was in that area when President let the ball go. He was clearly throwing it away as he ran out of real estate. Hudson Hall coming on the pursuit as you get a good look on our television broadcast to the associate head coach here, Ted Willman, and the offensive line coach barking orders to his huge offensive line. And we'll have to see what the penalty is about in the end zone. There are two fouls on the play. Personal foul, number one, red. Ellsworth downfield, number 60, white. This foul's offset. We'll replay the down. So an unsportsmanlike penalty, or a personal foul, that is, called on Tate Shaw. You saw Tate Shaw getting off the turf in the back of his own end zone, but those penalties offset. We'll do third down and goal all over again. Now under center is Chad President, but before he can get the play off, the whistles will blow, and it's a timeout. We'll take it as well. 3.46 to Tipping. play here in the first, first half. Westlake first down seven, and the Wildcats knocking on the door. Temple 21, Westlake 14. This is Westlake football. On game days, you see me running out here with close to 100 other people. It's a team effort. It takes all of us to make UT football a success. It's a lot like you and your finances. You need to surround yourself with the best people in the business. That's where University Federal Credit Union comes in. The UFCU team works hard to make sure your financial game plan is always in shape. University of Texas Athletics and University Federal. So close, we share the same name.
Coming out of the timeout, it's third down and goal from the six yard line. President under center. And the toss here will go to the near side. Carr trying to come around the corner. Carr at the five, at the four, and he's out of bounds before he hits the end zone. He dove for the pylon, but it is not enough as he is out of bounds right at the two. Fourth down and a huge decision here for the Temple Wildcats. It's a chip shot here for Cole Martin, and I thought on that play it looked like for a moment there could have been a holding penalty yeah. called on Bateman because Bateman got hit in the back. Well, Luke Womack got taken down in the middle of the line, but brings up a huge fourth down play for this Westlake defense. President under center, fourth and goal from the two, the handoff to Carr. Carr into the end zone, touchdown Temple. And once again, a chaparral helmet comes off. But a touchdown for Temple, and fourth and goal. They waste no time, and they get into the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. It was O'Connor's helmet that came off. Might be time to invest in a new chin strap. Trying to figure out exactly why his helmet just keeps flying off. That is the fifth helmet tonight that has come off during game play. Here's the point after touchdown. And drilling it through the uprights. Getting a little bit of that football, the chaparral defense there on special teams. But Cole Martin knocks it through. Temple 28, Westlake 14. Once again, a 14-point deficit matches the largest lead of the night for Temple. And now Westlake's going to try to answer here with 3.36 to play in the first half. We get an opportunity to go down to the sidelines at Abe Garcia. Abe, really we're seeing a slew of Westlake defenders. A lot of backups in the ball game, a lot of personnel changes, trying to keep a fresh look on the Westlake defense while trying to build depth at the same time. Abe, what's the mood down on the Westlake sideline? Well, the mood is that they're, you know, trying to keep up with this, uh, you know, explosive Temple offense. But the thing is, like, you know, you got a lot of guys hurt. Key guys, like Jack Merritt is, you know, pretty much like the captain in the defensive backfield and could be, you know, the captain of the defense. You know, Gabe Duran, who plays the middle linebacker position, he's another key factor. You know, the guys are running up the middle, they're passing up the middle. I mean, you got to find depth, especially early in these games, you got to figure it out. And that's what, they, you know, Westlake did last year and to make that, you know, state title run. They found depth in these games, early games, non-district games. Abe Garcia down on the sidelines. We mentioned Gabe Duran's name, the younger brother of Westlake's all-time leading tackler, Lance Duran, who's at Blinn College for his sophomore season. And now Cole Martin to kick it off from left to right, as you picture it in your mind's eye on our radio broadcast on The Word, 1490 AM. Rawlings with the catch of the kickoff right around the 15-yard line. He'll bring it out to the 25 to the 30 and out to the 33-yard line. And a personal battle going on between Rawlings and the entire Temple Wildcat special teams as he is running with an amazing amount of energy. And of course, we'll hear from him at the half. You listen to our radio broadcast inside Westlake's Chaparral Stadium. 88.1 FM on the Shap signal. Of course, AM 1490, we mentioned our radio partner. And of course, you can listen to it live on the Westlake Shap app. Head to the App Store on iTunes on any Apple device and download it today. 3.29 remaining in the half, down by 14. Jordan looking to pass, has some time, looking downfield, has a man wide open, and that pass is caught at the 45-yard line and diving forward to the 40 is Sean Rawlings. Rawlings really just taking this one personally here. 5'8", 160, playing like he's 6'3", 220. Really slow developing play there, but Jordan Siebert does a great job of just moving a little bit left in the pocket to buy himself some time. Waits for it to develop, and who else would be open but Sean Rawlings? A 28-yard pickup at a first down, down to the Temple 40-yard line, ball marked at the right hash mark. First down and 10, 3-12 to play, first half. They bunch up the wide receivers here to the near side left. Jordan looking, here comes the pressure, he doesn't see the pressure, and he goes down at the 49-yard line, and a huge play for Temple. It's Michael Hicks, and he comes in and knocks down the senior quarterback, chops down that tree at the Westlake 49-yard line. And yeah, that's something that Jordan Siebert just absolutely has to see coming it's not coming from the blind side. Uh, or a few times when he kind of looked down and you thought that he would have seen the guy coming, but he didn't, and that's a big sack for this Temple defense and the Westlake offense. As I tell you, the size of Jordan Siebert, he actually went down at the 49-yard line, right about the midfield stripe, but they're gonna give him the uh, Temple 48 on second down and 18, a loss of eight on the play. Three wide receivers in the package, two here to the near side left, one to the far side right. One back in the backfield, out of the gun, low snap. Jordan looking, firing quickly, and that pass is caught at the 38-yard line. Nice pickup on a quick strike to Patrick Elliott, his second reception of the night. Of course, Patrick Elliott with the first touchdown of the ball game, the only one on offense for the Chaparrells this evening. Yeah, nice throw there, nice delivery by Sievert. That's really what you want on a second down and 
long play is just get it in the third and manageable. And the third and nine is not what you want, but it's certainly more manageable than a third and 18. Two wide receivers in the pistol formation here for Sievert. Now back to pass on a three-step drop out of the gun. Now he fires here to the near side, and that pass is almost intercepted. He wanted it, did Dominique Thompson. He saw it coming, could not come up with it. Fourth down here for Westlake as Alex Chavez checks in. 151 to play in the first half. Westlake trailing by 14. And, John, a really big decision here for the Chaparrales. Do they try to just play a little bit more field position and hope that they can pin Temple deep. Or they try to go for it here because they will not get the football coming out of the locker room in the third quarter. Yeah, if I'm up in the press box or down on the sideline making this decision, I go for it if I'm Westlake. In this position with the way the Temple offense is moving this football. Fourth down and nine, and it looks like the Chaparrales are going to go for it, and a high snap goes over Sievert's head. Sievert collects the football, fires downfield. He has a man. That pass is batted up, and it's incomplete. What a heck of an effort by Grayer. Vedrick Grayer, the sophomore, had four tackles last week against Round Rock, made probably the play of the half as he kept alive on the play. It was very easy for a young player to quit on this and leave it upstairs. And Jordan Sievert does what most people would think is the impossible, collects the football off the ground after a high snap and actually gives his player an opportunity to catch the football. But what a play by Grayer knocking it out of bounds and it's incomplete a turnover on downs and president has 142 to work with here in the first half his team leading by 14 they swing it out here to the near side to Carr. Carr at the 38 stutter steps his way past the 41 to the 42 yard line and he's finally brought down aidman along with o'connor who actually manages to keep his helmet on at the 44 yard line as they pop Carr. a nice gain of about five yards call it six second down and four from the 45 yard line It looks like one of the Temple Wildcats was injured there, so he'll go off and the clock will now start. 90 seconds and rolling here as Minter checks in as the halfback in the formation, second down and four. On the zone read, President will keep it, and that pass is incomplete. As that pass was under or overthrown, excuse me, and it was intended for Love. Stefan Love got good hops on the outside, but not good enough. As Bennett Huddleston there trolling him. It'll be third down here and a big one for the Chaparrales. And you got to think the advantage right now is towards the Chaparral defensive backs. When President tries to go to the air, there's an interception there looming for the Chaparral defensive backfield. Now President flushed out of the pocket towards the left side. And here comes the ball. The ball is out. And Wesley has it. Wesley has it. The ball is out and recovering it for the Chaparrales is John Ryan O'Farrell. O'Farrell, the former offensive lineman turned defensive lineman, comes up with the rock, and it's Westlake football. Their first recovered fumble of the season, and their second forced turnover of the night. A huge opportunity for Westlake here, and only 70 seconds remain, but they're marked right at the 41-yard line in Temple territory, and what a pop by Aidman. Aidman with the strip. President with the fumble and O'Farrell recovers. First down and 10. Siebert looking right side. Has a man. That pass is caught for a first down at the 30 yard line. Just swinging it out to Patrick Elliott and letting the athlete and Elliott move. Clock stops momentarily with 64 seconds. They'll spot it right around the 29 yard line. Nobody's happier about that play than Bobby Dwyer, the center who had the high snap. Now they get an opportunity here to put this in the end zone. From the 29 yard line on first down, Jordan with tons of time. Fires to the far side. That pass is caught. Trying to get out of bounds. And it looks like he could not get out of bounds. That's back-to-back -back tosses to Elliott. Positive yardage, about a seven-yard pickup down to the 22-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. Clock inside, 45 seconds, and the Chaparrales need to move. Two wide receivers here to the near side left, one to the far side right, looking. Jordan with time, fires to the right side. Again, the play is open. This time it's caught by Patrick Elliott, and he gets out of bounds for a first down inside the 15-yard line, down to the 14. First down, Westlake. No reason to rush here. That was a great job of getting up to the line of scrimmage, running the play, getting the first down, getting out of bounds. You have 35 seconds left. You're at the 14-yard line. Westlake has one timeout left, so plenty of time. You just don't want to take a sack, and you want to execute. No turnovers. And this Westlake offense looking very good on this drive so far. 
The ball inside the red zone, inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. Jordan looking, has time, looking towards the end zone, has a man! And Scott Gansby can't come up with it. It's overthrown, and the big tight end had an opportunity and some space between himself and the defender. He had a linebacker on big six foot five. Zach Dansby, but it's an incomplete pass. The clock will stop with 30 seconds to play in the half. And you can consider here, given the field position and the timeout, you can consider some shorter routes, something across the middle, uh, going down in the flat. And if you get tackled short of the first down, you have that timeout. Jordan looking here on second down and 10. He fires like short. That. that pass is caught by Rawlings. Rawlings diving to the sideline, but his knee touches at the nine. Westlake has a timeout, and Jordan Siebert is going to call it. We'll keep it here, and John, a smart move by a smart player, and it looked like maybe the ball got out of bounds, but it was a tie between Rawlings' knee at the eight-yard line and the ball going out of the bounds on the apron. Yeah, that was a good call. He was in bounds there, so Westlake takes the timeout, 20 seconds left, third down. Now you just take a, you can try to get the first down, or you can uh, see if you can go take a shot to the end zone. We have the opportunity to tell you about one of the Shap Club sponsors here, and of course, sponsoring all the broadcasts this entire season. You've seen their ads on the television broadcast. It's Luxury Auto Works, Luxury Auto Works, noted, located on North Lamar. If you have a high-end vehicle, we know it's about your vehicle, but it's about you, not your car. And when you want to be taken care of properly the Austin, Texas way, try Luxury Auto Works. Luxury Auto Works, lo located on North Lamar. Click LuxuryAutoWorks.com. Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell, Abe Garcia down on the sidelines, our engineer Mike Pirtle, our associate producer Cameron Walker, our statistician Brian Ferguson, the whole crew back for the home opener here at Chaparral Stadium, live at Austin, Texas. 20 seconds remaining in the first half, 28 to 14. Westlake down by 14. It matches the largest lead of the night for Temple. But Westlake trying to get on the board and once again slice this lead in half. It's third down and four from the eight yard line. The low snap again. Jordan picks it up off the turf, fires towards the end zone, and that pass is incomplete. Running out of real estate on the far side was Patrick Elliott, and Elliott comes up. Looks like his shoe kind of came undone there, but Elliott fixes it, and it'll be fourth down. And once again, the center to quarterback snap, a huge problem thus far, and kind of a shocking one when you think about it, a three-year starter for Bobby Dwyer. But this is the second game in a row where he has had some issues getting the ball back to his quarterback. And just like that, it'll be Dallin Nelson on for his third field goal try. One of two in the opening contest. And Nelson getting an opportunity here to boot one from 25 yards out. The snap is down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. So taking advantage somewhat of the opportunity given to them, the Westlake Chaparrales come up with a fumble recovery, and they do turn it into points. It is Temple 28, Westlake 17 with 11 seconds to go here in the first half. And it's good for Westlake to get those three points. Certainly could have been worse with Temple getting the ball back with just over a minute left, but at the same time, disappointing to not put it in the end zone. And we go down to the sidelines. Abe Garcia, I know one of the things that we talk about is being able to at least work some positives. Sometimes they're there for the Chaparrales. Sometimes they're not there tonight, but definitely not what you wanted. You needed six but you got three, so something manageable here, but you got to watch out for the very talented uh, group from Temple here on special teams, Abe. Well, yeah, it's one of the good things. I mean, they didn't get the six, but they got three, and three is better than zero, and I think that little bit of Coach Allman has these guys believing. I'll ask him a couple of questions at halftime. We'll get his thoughts on him. Abe Garcia down on the sidelines, 11 seconds remaming here in the first half, 28 to 17, your score. On the scoring drive, seven plays, 32 yards, capped by... A 25-yard field goal by Dallin Nelson. His second field goal made as a first-year starter off the basketball team. And as word has it, a lot of recruiting from the basketball team going on as they saw him kick when he was a freshman, booting 40-yarders with no problem. Nelson with the kick, and he sidewinds it. It's a line drive. It'll be dropped as carrying it out of the back, carrying it up the field now for the Temple Wildcats. Once again, it's D'Artagnan Say. That is a big moving target, <laughs> returning kickoffs and punts here for the Temple Wildcats. And he's able to manage his way out to the 27-yard line. D'Artagnan Say, a little bit of everything tonight for the big senior. 
playing a little bit heavier than 200 pounds. He looks like a big load down on the field, probably closer to 210, 215. And that is a big, big difference, especially at the safety spot. Five seconds remaining here. They'll have one play. President will hand it off after the fake. Handing it off to Carr. Carr at the 35, and he'll be brought down to the 38-yard line, and that will do it for the first half of play. So the Chaparrales stave off what could have been much, much worse. They come up with a couple of turnovers. One, a 70-yard interception return for a touchdown by Rhodes' leg. And, of course, the touchdown pass from Jordan Siever to Patrick Elliott, the first time that duo has hooked up here. And we'll see what this is all about. Everybody staying put. It looked like that possibly there could have been a foul on that play. But I didn't see a flag come in. We'll see what Brian Jones has to say before we Good exit. Ball. Sportsman like conduct penalty on number 48 of Westlake. That foul being forced 15 yards on the second half kickoff. Half time. And once again, Westlake hit with what I would call an uncharacteristic amount yeah. of personal fouls here as uh, Darren Allman will head to Abe Garcia. We will get his thoughts here in just a moment. A wild half of football here at Chaparral Stadium for the 2013 home opener. Again, your halftime score, Temple 28, Westlake 17, and we head to the sidelines to Abe Garcia, who's with Darren Allman. Thanks, Joe. Coach, you'd be able to get a little momentum going into halftime with the turnover and the field goal. What does your team need to do in the second half to come out of here with a victory? We just got to grow up. Uh, we're making some, we're making a lot of mistakes. We, you know, we're not tackling very well. Uh, they're a good football team. We're making them look a little better than what they are probably because we're not playing very well. But, you know, give credit to them. They're playing uh, more consistent right now than we are. Uh, you know, we're uh, inconsistent on offense. We look great at times. We've had some big plays, but we're sloppy at times too, you know. And uh, so we'll get that fixed. And, uh, you know, defensively, we've got a lot of people playing a lot of different positions right now. We've got some depth problems going on. But, uh, you know, we'll try to straighten it out at halftime. It, we knew it was going to be a, uh, a close game and, and go back and forth, so we'll get it done. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Well, thank you very much. So the thoughts of Darren Allman at the half. We're back up in the UFCU broadcast booth. Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell. John, first half thoughts. You saw it. Westlake's got to grow up. But right now, very impressive are the Temple Wildcats. Well, their offense really is impressive. A well-oiled machine, and Coach Allman really nailed it. It was self-destruction all across the board. Penalties. Uh, we, that last penalty is huge, too, because Westlake's going to be kicking off from the 25-yard line, give this Temple offense good field position. But down 11 points, could have been worse, but at the same time, you shoot, you're shooting yourself in the foot, could have been better as well. So Westlake, a lot of things to work on. Again, a deficit at halftime for the second straight week. It's Westlake trailing by 11. Temple 28, Westlake 17. This is Westlake football. At age 40, attorney and Marine Corps reservist David Little was the picture of health until the left side of his body went completely numb. We were on the phone while he was driving home when he suddenly stopped talking. My dad had a stroke when he was driving me home. I'm just really glad he ended up at St. David's South Austin. St. David's South Austin saved my life. Do you know what to do in an emergency? Visit stdavids.com to learn more. The Steam Team is your number one choice for cleaning residential and commercial carpet, tile and wood flooring, upholstery, air ducts, and more, including 24-hour emergency water and fire damage restoration. All employees are trained and certified by the Institute of Inspection, Cleaning, and Restoration. You need steam for a deep down clean. Send in the team. The Steam 
team. Call 451-TEAM. And we welcome you back. Live coverage of Westlake football continues here in the second half. Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell up here in the UFCU press box. Of course, John, when you think about what happened in the first half, a lot of yardage on the ground and, of course, through the air for Chad President and Temple Wildcats. 28 points on the board. They will get the ball first. It's all going to be about how the Westlake Chaparrales can answer on the opening drive of the third quarter. And it all starts with the defense. It starts with tackling, which was a sore point for Westlake in the first half. Two stops for the Westlake defense in the first half. Both were turnovers. Every other possession for the Temple Wildcats ended in the end zone. So Westlake, they're going to have to try to find a way to stop this Temple Wildcat offense because down 11, it's crucial here to start the second half. It is indeed. We are just after 9.15 here Central Time, and we welcome all of you back to our radio broadcast on The Word, 1490 AM here in Austin, KLGO and our, of course, streaming website at westlakenation.com. And, of course, you can download the Westlake Shap app on the iTunes store. We are live in Austin, Texas. And, of course, watch the television rebroadcast on Time Warner Cable Sports Network. That's channel 1509 in the Austin area on the HD tier if you're a Time Warner Cable subscriber. The broadcast airs at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning, and you'll have to check your lo local listings, but it will air several times throughout the week as we found out this week. So again, plenty of chances to catch Westlake and Temple on the rebroadcast of this ball game on Time Warner Cable Sports Network. As we welcome you back into the broadcast booth here, my name is Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell. Our third member of the broadcast crew is Gabe, Abe Garcia. Abe, I know you talked to a very frustrated Darren Allman, and he said one thing that really has held true here through the halftime, the Westlake Chaparrales have got to grow up. Back to last year during this time in their non-district schedule, they opened the season, remember, as you remember, one and three. This is kind of a little, it kind of reminds me a little bit of last year and how the team actually started growing up, as he says, cut down the mistakes. They grew as a team together, got cohesion on the defensive side of the ball. Jordan Seward actually in that Temple game last year kind of was his coming out party, which kind of let a comeback in that Temple game. They came up a little bit short. I mean, that's probably what he's talking about. He kind of wants that to come back into this year. This team, maybe not as deep as last year's team, but he's looking for guys to make plays. He wants some leadership, and he needs to find it because, you know, Temple's a very, very good football team. As the Westlake Chaparrales retake the field here in the second half, they will start on defense, and they will have their work cut out for them. Chad President and company headed to the field to receive the second half kickoff. And we think about all of the things that really led to all of the mishaps for Westlake. Let's really be honest here. They have not played good football yet and managed to cling to an 11-point deficit here, John. It could be much, much worse. You think about last week with Cedar Park and the damage the Timberwolves were able to do in the second half. But as Darren Allman reminded us in the pregame interview or during our radio and Internet broadcast, Westlake, again, not playing well, but still managing to stay in the ball game. And, of course, as we saw in the second half of the Cedar Park game, John led twice and still lost the ball game. So there's a lot of things going on right now for Westlake. And you have to also remember it's a good positive setup here for the Temple Wildcats. That personal foul penalty at the end of the half gives the Temple Wildcats a little bit extra room here to work. And it will be Dallin Nelson kicking off from his own 25-yard line. Yeah, that could end up being a big penalty for Westlake. We'll see what kind of field position they get here, but no doubt it'll be very good field position for the Wildcats. And we'll have a scoring update for Round Rock and Harker Heights here in just a moment. A side winding kick by Nelson will be fielded by D'Artagnan Say at the 19-yard line to the 30, out to the 35-40, to the 45-yard line before he's brought down on the far side in front of the bench in front of his teammates, and he'll be brought down just shy of the 44-yard line. And uh, right now, Round Rock down 28 to 10 at the half to Harker Heights, a team that the Temple Wildcats know awfully well. Harker Heights stunning Temple in a big loss in 2012. You look at what they were able to do last year, Harker Heights with a 42 to 7 victory. So Round Rock, unfortunately, down to Harker Heights out of the clean area. And now Chad President on first down and 10 from his own 46-yard line wrapped up, but not before he falls forward to the 50-yard line and plunges to the Chaparral 49. One adjustment early I see just on that first play, it looked like Westlake had more 
guys near the line of scrimmage in between the tackles. So uh, they had the linebackers kind of up on that line trying to stop that running game from Temple. A four-yard pickup for President. He starts with Carr in the backfield. Zone read. Carr will take it. Now running out of real estate, trying to reverse his field, and it's not going to work. A pair of chaparrales in on the stop. That's O'Farrell along with Hudson Hall. And we're seeing a lot of playing time given to Harrison Lines, number 17. He's normally a wide receiver, and he's on the two deep for the Westlake Chaparrales on offense. But he's getting a nice opportunity here to play a little bit on the defensive side of the ball. And that is actually a two-yard loss in the play. Here's third down and eight from the 49-yard line. President looking downfield, man-on-man -man coverage. And they ran into each other. Now a flag is going to be thrown. We'll see what this is all about. Most likely a pass interference play, but it looked like possibly Andreo got caught up with the intended receiver, Stephon Love. A huge break for Temple if That's it is. Against the defense, number nine. 15-yard penalty, first down. Now they're going to call it against Bennett Huddleston. I saw Andreo coming out of the far side of the field. Thought maybe he might he be on the coverage there on Love, but it's a pass interference and a big, big break for the Temple Wildcats facing a third and long. And just like that, Wildcats have a first down. 28-17, the Wildcats lead as we are just underway here at Chaparral Stadium in the second half. The handoff will go to Carr. Carr coming to the near side, steps back inside the left hash mark, and he's brought down to the 31-yard line. Nice play by Tate Shaw as he comes up and makes the pop on Jeff Carr. Very impressed with the young junior here. A lot of shifty moves as he goes to the right of the hash mark and then cuts it back inside with ease. Yeah, he's a guy that'll really wear down your defense because you're just lunging at him, missing tackles. Hard guy to get a hold of. A six-yard pickup. Again, the zone read. This time, Carr's going to go around left end. Inside the 30, giving chase. On the far side is Hudson Hall, and he steps out of bounds with a first down run. Does Jeff Carr, and trying to bring him down on the far side. you got to like the effort, at least, starting things off by Bryce Beauvais. As he gave chase on the far side. First down and 10, the ball marked at the 23-yard line in Chaparral territory. Ten and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. And now just a swing pass here to Carr. Carr with some running room to the 20 into the 17-yard line, and he's wrapped up there at the 17, and a nice open field tackle by Rhodes' leg. And it's so hard, too, for this Westlake defense because as the defensive end, the guy with that has contained, you don't want to go too far outside because that leaves a gaping hole inside of you for the quarterback, Chad President, to keep the ball and take it. So you... You know, it's, and you don't want to stay inside because then that gives up the contain on the outside. So that's really the dilemma that the Westlake defense has been in all night. Seven-yard pickup for Jeff Carr, second down and three from the Chaparral 16-yard line. Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell, Abe Garcia down on the sidelines. The wind picking back up on the field, blowing in that exact same direction from southeast to northwest. And now Marcus Hatcher in the ball game. He'll flank President. The handoff will stay with President. President will keep it on the zone read. President eluding two tacklers at the 10-yard line and diving forward to the 5-yard line, down to the 4. A nice pickup there. First down and goal inside the 5 at the 4. They're just so tough, too, when you're missing guys like Gabe Duran and Brecken Hager. We haven't seen him play in this game either. And then obviously Jack Meredith, two or three of your big time defensive stars. First down and goal from the four. They try the handoff and then President takes it back. Running out of room there at the four yard line is President. And pick your poison, but Daniel Aidman there at the bottom of the pile. Has no gain on the play here. The ball will be marked at the four. It'll be second and goal. There's so many options here for the Temple offense. And it's, it's been tough on the Westlake defense all night that come out in the I formation. I formation under center is president. They do have a motion man. They fake it to one, but whistles are going to fly here. Some early movement, no doubt. Stephon Love was coming in motion here on the near side from the far side of the field to the Westlake bench. Replay second down. And that's exactly what Brian Jones, our referee, is telling us. It is a false start, and it will be on the Temple Wildcats. A little bit more running room here. Backs them up to the nine, where they'll repeat second down. Second and goal. 8.56 to play here in the third quarter. This is the opening possession for the Temple Wildcats. A big third down and nine play. And a pass interference call on Westlake. Gave the ball to Temple. First down in Westlake territory. Now they stand at second and goal from the nine. Another misdirection. This time the handoff goes to Marcus Hatcher. Hatcher tripped up in the backfield and can't keep his feet. Kind of a shoestring grab at Hatcher across the line of scrimmage from someone that was down on the ground. 
and it tripped up right around the seven yard line. We get a good look at the replay there and it just looked like he might have just stepped over one of the defenders who got a piece of him. Here's third down and goal from the eight. Under center is president. A toss here to Hatcher on the near side. Hatcher steps out of one tackle. Hatcher at the five. Hatcher at the goal line. Hatcher into the end zone. Touchdown Temple. You know, I don't, the Westlake defenders look like they're there. I just don't know. They're just not able to make the tackles here. It's uh, going to be disappointing watching film as you see a couple of Westlake defenders just bounce off the running back, Hatcher. And now Cole Martin coming on for the extra point try. Martin, the young sophomore, out of the hold of Chase Trulo. Snap is back, the kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 8.16 to play here in the third quarter, the Wildcats strike first. It's Temple 35, Westlake 17. This is Westlake football. For 102 years, the Coverts have set the standard for car dealers in Central Texas. Hi, I'm Jenny Covert, and your parents, grandparents, and even some of your great-grandparents have shopped with my family. Our service, our inventory, and of course, our low Covert price are the reasons over one million customers come back again and again. We want to be your car dealer. Let us prove it. Covert Auto Group, Austin, Bastrop, and Hutto. Back to Chaparral Stadium, live in Austin, Texas. The 2013 home opener for the Westlake Chaparrales, and they find themselves in a hole. The Temple Wildcats with a 10-play, 55-yard drive, make it a 53-yard drive, took 338 off the clock, an eight-yard touchdown run by Marcus Hatcher, his third touchdown run of the game. And Cole Martin will put his right foot into it, and Rawlings will take it from the eight. Rawlings after the 20, to the 25-30, flag comes in, Rawlings still at his feet driving forward to about the 35-yard line and a flag thrown right around the 24-yard line. Another crucial mistake, a penalty there. It's going to be on the Wesley Chaparrales. It'll probably take this ball back to the 14-yard line. The flags are sitting there at the 24. Field position. We saw Temple get the ball at the 45-yard line on their first possession of the second half. And 10 yards spot of the foul. First down. Brian Jones, our referee. Once again, our official here in the booth, John Nidell, calling it perfectly. It'll be first down and 10. Westlake with favorable field position before that flag was thrown. Now they line up inside their own 15-yard line at the 14. So 76 yards in front, or excuse me, 86 yards in front of the, the Westlake Chaparrales right now. Is under center is Jordan Sievert for the first series of the second half for the Shaps. The toss will go here to the near side. Trying to find his way through on the left side for the Westlake Chaparrales is Alex Chavez. And now a slew of Wildcat defenders drive him backwards, but he's able to get positive yardage out to about the 17-yard line. And leading the way, once again, is D'Artagnan Say. And now whistles are blowing. We've got a hurt Wildcat. And it will be an official timeout. We will go ahead and take it as well. 7.50 to play here in the third quarter. Westlake trailing Temple 35-17. to This is Westlake football. Bedbugs can invade your home via unexpected places, like from a college dorm room or a family trip. Bedbugs are hard to detect and almost impossible for a homeowner to get rid of themselves. ABC's heat remediation process is the most effective non-chemical treatment available. Heat gets rid of bed bugs in a matter of hours with no damage to household contents. With a single treatment, rooms can return to normal use free of bed bugs. For bed bug problems, call ABC Home and Commercial Services, specialists for your environment. And 
And we welcome you back to Chaparral Stadium. A little quick trigger by our referee, Brian Jones. D'Artagnan say the hurt individual for the Wildcats and took a while for him to get to the sidelines, but a quick whistle in play. We only missed one play, and it was a two-yard gain. Sets so up third down and five here for the Westlake Chaparrales. Plenty of time for Jordan Siebert looking downfield. Has a man, and that pass is caught by Patrick Elliott. A diving attempt, and Patrick Elliott has a first down and huge yardage out to the Chaparral 46-yard line, and a big first down play there for Patrick Elliott as Jordan Siebert hooks up with him for a 26-yard strike and a first down. Jordan Siever very quickly to the line. Power eye look, and they're going to snap it quick. A toss, this time to the right side. Ben Slaughter trying to turn around the corner and does briefly, but just gets about maybe three yards on the carry. Brings up second down and seven. Going back to that pass play, it was really take your pick for Jordan Siebert. Patrick Elliott on the outside. Sean Rawlings in the slot. Both ran deep posts and both beat their man. So a good pass play for the Westlake Chaparrales to move this ball downfield. Second down and eight officially. Power eye look again. This time Alex Chavez will get the ball. He'll cover it up, and it goes for maybe a yard loss. Check that. It's Ben Slaughter. And Ben Slaughter definitely the smaller of the two backs, even though they're... Height and weight are almost identical when you think about it. It looks like Alex Chavez might have put on about 10 to 15 pounds over the summer, but either way you slice it, that is not Ben Slaughter's specialty. He can run inside, but his his specialty is getting to the outside and using that speed. No gain on the play officially. Pistol formation. Here's third down and eight. Here's Jordan abort of avoiding the pressure and throwing it here to the near side. That pass intended for Ben Slaughter, and it was low, incomplete pass. Once again, Westlake just struggling as this time the Wildcats send a blitzing linebacker and the person of Dominique Thompson. He was the one that got through to Jordan Sievert, and Sievert forced to just throw it away. Now it's fourth down here for the Chaparrales. 35 to 17 on fourth down and eight. We'll see if dropping back is Jordan Sievert, and he will. Nobody back deep to receive here for the uh, Wildcats. And again, a low snap. Once again, a low snap on fourth down, and Jordan Sievert, already six foot four, has to bend over. And at some point in time, you have to think this is now becoming a mental struggle for the center to quarterback relationship. And a three year starter, Bobby Dwyer, having his issues. And it kind of reminds me as we bring in Abe Garcia. Abe, it's a problem that you see some catchers have just throwing the ball back to the pitcher. It's something you do every single time, but if it gets inside your head, it can be a tough move to play. Yeah, and you, if you didn't get, guys didn't see that Bobby Dwyer come into the sideline, helmet off, frustrated, he's pointing at the ground, motioning his snap. I mean, right now, I just think it's all in his head, and it's one of those mental things. I mean, it's been an issue for two games, a game and a half now. Jordan Seifer, you see him, it throws off the timing of every play, especially on pass, quick pass plays. You know, John and I talked about this last week. Jordan has to look down, come back up, and in an eye level are gone, and the receivers have already run their routes. And even that one-tenth of a second is really big on those pass plays, and the consistency needs to be there for in order for that Westlake offense to get going. And you, They've been inconsistent for a game and a half so far. At Luxury Auto Works, they take their car maintenance and repair to a whole new level. You're the customer, not the car. Their team knows your high-end vehicle is more than just a way to get around, and you don't have time to wait for the dealership to fit you in on their schedule. You need the work to be done on your schedule. Luxury Auto Works only hires technicians that have extensive dealer training, and all work is backed by a full one-year warranty. So click LuxuryAutoWorks.com or save their number into your cell phone at 512 222 8867. Luxury Auto Works, a proud sponsor of the Westlake Shaft Club. 5.57 to play here in the third quarter. Westlake 35 to 17. Again, that deficit climbing here. And Chaparral's again a turnover on downs, technically on a fourth down play. On, and the ball's on the ground. And Westlake has it. So just like that, as we were going to talk about how they turned it over on downs, the momentum swings back to the way of the bird. The Chaparral's have their second fumble recovery of the ball game. And Westlake gets the ball back here in the third quarter. That's just the simple exchange on the read option play. Chad President wanted to give it to Jeff Carr. Jeff Carr thought the president was going to pull it, and the ball ended up on the turf. And William Big Wang, for Westlake. my bad, sorry about that, John. William Wang came up with the football and the fumble by Jeff Carr, and a huge opportunity. So let's see if that frustration by Bobby Dwyer inspires him to pass back to his quarterback cleanly. This is a clean pass. The handoff out of the gun will go to Alex Chavez, who cannot turn the corner, and it'll be a loss of down, or loss of a yard back towards the 42-yard line. They're going to have to start mixing up the play calling just a little bit more, start throwing on first down, whether it's play action or just a straight drop back, getting a little too predictable in the offensive play calling. 
534 remaining here and a gift given to them by the Temple Wildcats. Put the ball on the carpet for the second time this game. Three turnovers in the ball game, and you wouldn't know it by the scoreboard. Temple leading 35 to 17. And now. Yeah, it's, it was actually a chop block on the Westlake. Ouch. Somebody on the Westlake offensive line or maybe one of the receivers. So that's a 15-yard penalty. And I, never, I never saw the penalty. flag come in, and I and we're looking actually all four of us here in the booth looking for the flag, and we don't see it. 15 yards back to the 28-yard line. Swing pass here to the near side is caught at the 30 to the 35-yard line. Turning on the burners and making his way down the left sideline is Alex Chavez. Tex-Mex into Temple territory, and he rumbles his way downfield. And let's see where they mark him out of bounds. A big, big run of 41 yards and a first down, down to the Temple 31-yard line. A big, big catch and run for Alex Chavez. And you see why David Bailiff loves Calvin Anderson here. The big downfield block, just an amazing play there by a left tackle. A low snap again. Jordan able to pick it up and fire to the far side. That pass is complete to Patrick Elliott. He's still on his feet before he's corralled out of bounds just outside the 17-yard line. So another first down, a pickup of 14. 14 yards on the play and a first down for Wesley. I yeah, just can't overstate the play by Calvin Anderson on that pla uh, the play to Alex Chavez. The Rice commit going all the way downfield. He was about 20 yards downfield, making an athletic pancake block on one of the Temple defenders, really the last line of defense to the first down for Alex Chavez. Patrick Elliott checking out of the ball game. Jumbo set here. Power I look. Siebert under center. The toss here to the near side and uh, trying to find his way through the traffic has been Slaughter. Slaughter on his feet at the 15 yard line. So he does pick up positive yardage. Two yards to be exact. It'll be second down and eight. And going to war with Ben Slaughter. Coming up and making the pop was Ladarius Thomas. In the front for Temple is holding up very well against the running game. Westlake having a hard time finding any kind of room in between the tackles. Second down and eight. Once again, power eye look under center is Siebert. They fake the handoff on the play action. Jordan going to the end zone. Has a man, and that pass is caught with the flag. Or excuse me, it's incomplete, but not one, but two flags. And it was intended for Zach Dansby. A little handsy there from Ladarius Thomas as the tight end, Dansby, got behind him. And this is going to be a penalty against the Wildcats. No doubt pass interference on Ladarius Thomas. And it will be... A first down opportunity here for Westlake will await the official call from Brian Jones. Pass interference, defense number five. That's a spot foul, automatic first down. Automatic first down, and this will set up shop. Westlake Chaparrales again, 35 to 17. They need to score on this drive. 439 remaining in the third quarter here. And would you believe this is their opening possession of the second half? First and goal from the Temple four yard line from the left hash mark, and it's Sean Rawlings at quarterback. Slaughter going in motion. They'll fake the handoff. It looks like a free play. Rawlings straight up the middle, and he gets two yards towards the one-yard line, and Rawlings actually will be brought down at the one, but flags fly, and this looks like it's going to be against Temple. Flag came out, but the play didn't stop. Brian Jones, tell Offside. us about it. Defense, number 27. The foul will be enforced. Happy to to the goal. First down. So it's a first down again. It'll set up first and goal this time. The ball marked at the two-yard line just inside the left hash mark. The men in red come jogging in from the sideline in front of the Westlake bench. And Sievert back in there as the quarterback. He'll command the attention in the huddle. Break it. Here's first and goal from the two. Power eye look. Sievert under center. Eyes the defense. Right now, six men along the line of scrimmage here on first and goal. The snap, the handoff, and a huge play. Wow, what a hit by Thompson. Dominique Thompson, the young man headed to Navy, makes a huge pop on the ball carrier back at the five-yard line. What a huge loss of three yards and a nice play there by Thompson. Yeah, you could just tell he was antsy would probably be the best word to describe him before that snap. You just knew he was going to be coming on a blitz and a great play there by Thompson. Second and goal from the five. Power eye look. Jordan with a fake of the toss, and now Jordan fires towards the far side. That pass is caught, and once again for the second time, can you believe a halfback once again makes his presence known? In his second varsity game, Brian Kinney catches a touchdown pass. Brian Kinney in for the score. Touchdown, Westlake. And a great job there by Jordan Siebert because Thompson was coming in on a blitz again and almost got the right arm of Siebert. Should have been a personal foul there on Temple. A late hit in the end zone. 
I don't know how they didn't throw that flag, but a great play by Siebert, and Westlake puts six on the board, looking to make it seven. Yeah, you're right about that. We have an opportunity on the television replay to look at Ladarius Thomas, and he actually did hit Brian Kenny well after he made that grab. Two-point conversion try here for Westlake, try to even things up and cut the lead to 10. Siebert looking towards the end zone, and he's flushed out, fires towards the end zone, and that pass is incomplete. And wrapping him up in the backfield there was Deshaun Sellers. But with 350 remaining in the third quarter, Westlake gets on the board. It's a 12-point lead. Temple 35, Westlake 23. This is Westlake football. At age 40, attorney and Marine Corps reservist David Little was the picture of health until the left side of his body went completely numb. We were on the phone while he was driving home when he suddenly stopped talking. My dad had a stroke when he was driving me home. I'm just really glad he ended up at St. David's South Austin. St. David's South Austin saved my life. Do you know what to do in an emergency? Visit stdavids.com to learn more. This winter, prepare to be amazed as Elisa's Dance Academy and the Westlake Symphonic Orchestra come together to perform a variety of holiday favorites. From Tchaikovsky to Jingle Bell Rock, Audiences will be astounded by concert quality music and dramatic visual effects in a stunning production perfect for all ages. Join us December 12th, 13th, and 14th as the Westlake Technical Entertainment Crew and Lexus of Austin present The Nutcracker Spectacular. A six play, 43 yard drive for the Westlake Chaparrales. Took 202 off the clock. A five yard touchdown reception by Brian Kinney, his second of the season, his first of the night. And a two point conversion try failed for the Westlake Chaparrales. So it is 35 to 23. A 12 point deficit here for the Westlake Chaparrales. And Dallin Nelson lining up for the kickoff. They'll kick off from right to left here in the third quarter. Westlake wearing the red jerseys, the silver pants, the blue numerals trimmed in red on those red jerseys. Trimmed in white, I should say. And taking the kickoff return here is Jamarquis Williams. Check that. It's actually uh, Davion Curtis and a flag thrown at the end of the play. We'll have to see what this is all about here. A lot of laundry on the field. Let's go down to the sidelines to Abe Garcia. Yeah, Joe, I think that was a spider T Y banana. And, you know, you can't go broke making a profit. That was a great play by Jordan Stephen, offense coordinator, making a great call. And like John said, time to open up the playbook a little bit, let Jordan kind of lead this team. Temple's been kind of pinching the middle and expecting a lot of runs. Big uh, catch and run by Alex Chavez to uh, keep that drive going. You know, Westlake's not out of the woods yet. Ten yards, I mean, they can the come back in this game. Just get a couple of stops, maybe a turnover here. They're right back in it. Well, Brian Jones said that there was actually holding on that kickoff return, which actually sets up the Temple Wildcats from their own 20-yard line. First down and 10 from the 20, 343 to play here in the third quarter. They have a 12-point lead. The handoff will go to Carr. Carr trying to knife his way through the defense. It does to the 30, to the 35, out to the 40. Still on his feet as he's brought down there at the 40-yard line. The end of the play there, making the stop for the Westlake defense in that backup linebacker position, Bryce Boiva. And again, we saw Brecken Hager not suited out for the second half. He is in a backwards cap and street clothes. First down and 10 from the 39-yard line. The handoff again goes to the car, and the ball came loose! The ball came loose, and Westlake has it! Harrison Lines has come up with the football the second time in the quarter that Temple has put the ball on the carpet, and Westlake has recovered four turnovers by the defense here, and the Chaparrales right back in the ball game here, down 12. And that's pretty much the only way Westlake could have possibly stayed in this game at this point. Four turnovers, they've been able to convert them to points so far, and they're going to have to do that right now. 35-23, how big would a touchdown be right now to cut this lead to one possession? Down, not out, especially when you have the ability to swing the momentum. Second straight set of downs where Temple has turned the ball over. First down and 10 from the Temple 37-yard line. Man in motion out of the backfield. They make the handoff. Play action. Here comes the rush. Downfield goes Siebert. He has a man, and it's incomplete. And it looked like John Rhodes is in the ball game here, and we haven't really seen the senior wideout, six foot two, and he is a target down there, but he just did not have the separation. And when your first play from scrimmage comes from 320 in the third quarter, they tried to go up top, and unfortunately, Rhodes just not able to catch up with the football. So second down and 10 from the 37 yard line here in Temple territory. Two wide receivers to the far side right, one here to the near side left, it's Elliott. 
A back on either side of Seward on second down and 10. Low snap, but a play action nonetheless. Rolling here to the near side, firing towards Patrick Elliott. That pass is caught, and Elliott's going to take it to the house. Elliott from 37 yards out, hauls in his second touchdown pass of the ball game. Touchdown, Westlake. Touchdown, Patrick Elliott. It was Grayer, the corner there, that gambled on that play. An out route by Patrick Elliott. He tried to make the play on the ball, and the ball snuck by him, got into Patrick Elliott's hands, and Grayer took himself out of that play as Patrick Elliott had wide open 15 yards for the touchdown, and now Westlake, fairly unbelievably now, within one score. If you were to take a look at this overall, this is probably one of the ugliest games we've seen from all vantage points when it comes to, and again, a snap, the issue here. The snap is down, the kick is up, and it is good. But once again, as Andrew Zucker with his first game back after a serious injury in spring ball, able to deep snap once again here on extra point tries. He is technically the short snapper. And Dallin Nelson able to knock it through, but what a huge turn of events here. And in the last three possessions where Westlake has scored, all three of those possessions have come off of turnovers. All three of them fumbles. The fumble to end the half that got Westlake on the board with the 25-yard field goal by Dallin Nelson. Two fumbles lead to two touchdowns here for the Shafts. It is now a five-point deficit. It's been as high as 21, and Wildcats again now, they've got to regroup as turnovers have been the huge, huge issue here and really the story of the third quarter, John. And that's how Westlake made their hay in the playoffs last year. It was turnovers. You thought that you know, after a couple of games of a lot of turnovers that maybe it was the opponent that was just making mistakes, but no, Westlake does a great job of forcing those turnovers. It's not by accident that they're able to get all of these turnovers each and every game, and uh, it's the defense that came up in the playoffs last year. It's the defense that has come up big with these turnovers so far in this game. 312 remaining in the third quarter, 35 to 30. The Chaparrales will kick it off. Dallin Nelson again will put his right leg into this one. Davion Curtis back deep to receive. He'll kick it his way. Curtis will once again retreat to around his nine yard line and he'll take it at the 20. Cuts it back to the midfield to the 25. Out to the 30 and there he's wrapped up by a pair of chaparrales at the 30 yard line. So a nice open field opportunity there for the Westlake special teams. A two play 37 yard drive, a 37 yard touchdown reception for Patrick Elliott and for the chaparrales and Jordan Sievert, his third touchdown pass of the ball game, really putting together quite a performance despite the fact that they're having issues snapping the ball. He's been under pressure, but give credit to Jordan Sievert. He is able to make quick decisions despite the bad snaps and despite the rush from Temple. First down and 10 as president. Now see his, he's seen his lead trimmed to five. The handoff goes to Carr. Carr's the young man that's put the ball on the carpet the last two times, but they're going to stay with him as Jeff Carr, the junior, out to the 35-yard line. Five-yard pickup, it'll be second down and five. And technically, it's a gain of about four yards. So the board's going to read second down and six. Now Chris Minter in the ball game. Play action. President rolling here to the near side, and that pass is caught by True Love. True Love at the 45-yard line, knocked out of bounds at the 47. It's good for a first down. And Chase True Love just kind of working his way from the slot position into the sideline here in front of the Westlake bench. Comes up with a nice catch and a first down. And that ball out to the 48-yard line. A 13-yard pickup there and a first down as the ball marked at the Temple 48-yard line. A hurry-up offense here as snapping the ball quickly is President. He's going to keep it on the zone read. Coming from behind 44. him, President is upended at the 45-yard line. That tackle made from behind. And we have called this young man's name. Bryce Boiva really doing a great job here subbing for Breck and Hager, taking over also for Gabe Duran, who would no doubt move into the inside linebacker position. He's really come up strong with a heck of a game on second down and four after the six-yard game by President. Number six getting the call straight up the gut. Out to the 30. Cuts it back towards midfield inside the 25-yard line, down to the 21. And once again, Jeff Carr really just knifing his way through this Westlake defense after putting the ball down on the ground twice. And just like that, Carr comes off the field in favor of Marcus Hatcher, who has two rushing touchdowns. It seems like right around the red zone, Coach Mike Spradlin wasting no time in putting in Hatcher. 
Now play action. That pass over the middle is caught by Eric Hours Mendy. And Hours Mendy able to make the grab at the 10 yard line. And he's knocked down inside the nine at the eight yard line. And that is a first down, a pickup of 12 yards and a first and goal situation here for Temple. How scary is it that Chad President and running back Jeff Carr are both juniors? They're, these guys are going to be back together again next year in this backfield. Just a lethal duo. First down and goal here. The ball marked at the eight-yard line. Opting to keep it as President. President with some room across the five. President walks into the end zone. A touchdown for Temple, and Chad President has his third rushing touchdown of the night. President into the end zone from three yards out. Very impressive as President really just calming the troops after back-to-back -back fumbles lead to 14 points for the, or I should say 13 points for the Chaparrales. President walking his team down the field and in for six. Touchdown, Temple. The snap is back. Yep. And now a flag is going to come in, and we turn it over to our in-booth official, who is no doubt going to call this before Brian Jones has an opportunity, but it's going to be a hold. Yep. On the outside, the outside rusher for Westlake got free, and you could just see him get tugged by the outside protector on the right side of the line. And they might be, they might have the option to take this on the kickoff. We'll see. That would be huge here. Again, right now it's an 11-point lead. The Wildcats trying to get it back to a 12-point lead. Team number 88. 10 yards, we'll retry. They're going to retry it here. 11 point lead with just under 90 seconds to play in the third quarter, and it's been a wild one. 14 points, 13 points for the Chaparrales, excuse me. And now it'll be a 30 yard try here for the extra point out of the hold of True Love. And that is blocked. A nice job there by the Chaparral special teams. They got a piece of it, even though they were held in the initial play. And the point after touchdown is fake. 127 remaining here in the third quarter. And the Wildcats with an 11-point lead here. But you got a sense that even though the defense kind of gave way to the Temple Wildcat offense there, a lot of credit goes to President for the peace of mind in that drive. And also, you got to look at Jeff Carr. Back-to-back -back fumbles led to 13 points for the Chaparrales. They've been on him. Carr able to turn in some nice first down yardage. And of course, for the Temple Wildcats, it's all about just keeping distance from the Chaparrales. But the offense have got to come together here, John. They've got to figure out a way to get on the board and somehow force a stop on the Temple Wildcats. Yeah, Temple put up over 600 yards last week against Round Rock. This is, in terms of the entire state, one of the better offenses you'll see in the entire state of Texas. Uh, I, I would not be surprised if this football team right here, these Wildcats, make a significant run in the state playoffs. Uh, they are very, they look very, very good tonight, especially for being the second game of the year. Uh, they're on their game. On their game and very impressed with their offensive line play. They seem to be in sync as we get a good look here on our television broadcast at the young man headed to Rice. Calvin Anderson, a transfer in from Georgetown. He played in the state championship game a year ago, trying to get back there with this Westlake team. His new friends in red as they learn everything here. Calvin Anderson, Part of the offensive line will give you the scoring drive in just a moment. And it'll be fielded, the kickoff that is, at the 14 by Rawlings. Rawlings at the 25, met by a slew of tacklers there at the 31-yard line. A six-play, 70-yard drive, took 138 off the clock in the third quarter. A nine-yard touchdown run by Chad President, his third touchdown run of the evening. And President really doing it all here along with the running game. He is a big part of that running game and includes Jeff Carr, who's turned in yet another fabulous night in his second game in a varsity uniform for the Wildcats. But we can't forget about a guy that gets in when the ball moves inside the 25-yard line. Marcus Hatcher really role-playing tonight. He also with a couple of touchdown runs. First down and 10 for the Chaparrales at the 31-yard line. 118 to play here, third quarter. Two wide receivers each way. The ball on the left hash. Low snap, Jordan fakes, and then passes straight over the middle. That pass is caught for big yardage. And a nice grab there by Zach Dansby. Dansby with his first opportunity here tonight. He's been targeted a couple of times. This time, just a quick route right over the middle. And the six foot five tight end has huge yardage. A 28-yard pickup down to the Temple 42-yard line. First down, Westlake. That's one of those plays where Jordan Sievert is alone in the backfield. He takes a quick stab, uh, almost a play-action type of, of pass, and then drops back and quick pass there to Zach Dansby for a nice Same game. formation, Jordan looking to the far side, and that pass is just 
behind the intended receiver on the far side, and it was intended for Josh Latham. Latham coming up empty on that opportunity as Jordan just rifled that ball to the far sideline in front of the bench of Temple. Yeah, but he put it in a good spot, though, even though it was incomplete. Put it to the outside shoulder of Latham with the defensive back on the inside. So it was either going to be Josh Latham's ball or an incomplete pass. Unfortunately for Westlake, an incomplete pass. Second down and 10 from the 42-yard line in Temple Territory. Again, over the middle. That pass is juggled and, inter and almost had an opportunity to be intercepted. I thought perhaps maybe one of the linebackers would come down with that ball, but Dominique Thompson on the hit. And the much smaller Sean Rawlings could not control the football. So it's an incomplete pass. Latham checks out. Slaughter checks in. Staying on the field to be John Rhodes and... Rhodes, part of a trio of receivers here to the near side left. It's Rawlings, Patrick Elliott, and Rhodes on the near side on third down and 10, and it's a big third down. Siebert with tons of time. Fires over the middle, that pass is batted down. Dominique Thompson, this young man is everywhere. Pay attention, boys and girls. He is probably one of the best linebackers in the state. If he is able to just sit back and camp out, we're not talking about a pass that is just thrown by your average senior quarterback. This is a Division I quarterback that is rifling the ball. And a very quick opportunity here for the Chaparrells. They're going to back it up on fourth down. It looks like a punch. And now a bad snap goes over the head of Jordan Seaver. He collects it, looking downfield, throws downfield, and that pass is almost intercepted. And now, Ladarius Thomas, another cheap shot. He had one in the back of the end zone there, and Rawlings trying to collect himself. Calvin Anderson coming over and making his teammate go to the near sideline, and we've seen Thomas do that not once, but twice. He did it to Kenny on the touchdown pass earlier in the quarter, and now he did it well after the play. Once again, no flag on that late hit after the play had come to an end. We get a good look at it here on the television broadcast, folks, and that's exactly what it was. Play was over. And then they just kind of go at each other, but look like maybe on the second look, it wasn't as dastardly as it appeared. But we saw Thomas do it earlier. So again, cooler heads prevail, but a turnover on downs and nonetheless, another bad snap on fourth down. Now President fires here to the far sideline. That catch made by Carr. Carr across midfield, picks up positive yardage to the 48-yard line. It's a 10-yard pickup and a first down. 41 to 30, the 11-point lead still in play here as the Chaparrells could not get anything done on that offensive possession. Following the touchdown here in the waning seconds of the third quarter by Temple, their only score of the third quarter. And now back to pass in an empty backfield as president. That pass is caught. Caught here on the near sideline. A huge hit by, by Rhodes' leg. But the young man that made the catch, Nate, and I, uh, Marquise Collins actually, the one getting the opportunity here on the near side. And Collins makes the grab inside the 40 down to the 39-yard line. And it looks like they're going to mark him out of bounds at the 37. So with that, it's a 10-yard pickup and yet another first down. 20 yards and back-to-back -back plays here. And President back in the shotgun. From the Chaparral 37, here's the snap. They fake it, and now running it is President. President still on his feet inside the 35, down to the 30-yard line, and he's brought down to the 28. Tate Shaw is there. Yeah, the Westlake defenders there are all over the back of Chad President. You can't bring him down. We'd like to take this time to recognize our radio partner. You're listening to live coverage of Westlake football on The Word, 1490 AM. KLGO, Austin, Texas. After three quarters of play, it's Westlake with an 11-point deficit. The Wildcats of Temple 41, Westlake 30. This is Westlake football. Being asked to do, and they think less. You know, I think uh, defensively, we may have had a little bit too much on them the other night in the secondary especially, and it, and it caused us to give up a couple of big plays because we weren't in the right spot. We lost focus a little bit. So we tried to simplify a lot on defense uh, this week, and, uh, and offensively, it's just the fundamentals of practicing hard, you know, and playing the game fast in practice so that, uh, so that you're in shape to finish at the end when you have the lead, and we had it twice the other night in the second half.
welcome you back to live coverage of Westlake football, the fourth quarter. It's Westlake and Temple, two 5A teams separated by about 75 miles of I-35 pavement. It'll be second down and nine here, and early whistles. A little jump on both sides of the ball. We'll have to see who jumped false first, start. and it's a false start Apple. on Five Temple. Penalty. Second down. So Brian Jones telling us that uh, Temple moved first, the men in white. White jerseys, white pants, blue numerals. The white helmet with the Temple T. And once again, some issues with communication and back-to-back -back false start penalties here to lead off the false fourth start. quarter. Offense, five drop penalty, second down. So now what was first down and 10, the ball just keeps moving Westlake's way back to the 39-yard line in Chaparral territory. It'll be second down and 12 officially. Two wide receivers to the far side right, one here to the near side left, back on one side. And now back to pass the president, looking, fired downfield, into double coverage. And this is gonna be picked off in the end zone! Picked off in the end zone by guess who? Rose Leg coming up with his second interception of the night, his third of the season. And just like that, the Chaparrales have the football back. A huge pick for Rose Leg. How, how long did Rose Leg stay in the air there? Look at the athleticism. Amazing interception and a big play for the Westlake defense. Fifth turnover of the game. and. Down 11 points, this game's not over yet. If this offense can put together a drive. Well, I'm gonna do some investigative reporting after the ball game. I gotta find out where Rhodes Lake's parents moved. May not have to move very far, but St. Andrew's loss is Westlake's gain in the defensive backfield. A huge turn of events here. And now Rawlings, the quarterback of record, again a low snap, and now Rawlings recovers it. He's a little bit lower to the ground than Jordan Siebert, and he's able to squirt through the line of scrimmage and pick up four yards after the low snap. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, just imagine taking a snap and then just counting one second and then starting the play. That's basically what's happening when you have to bend down and then gather yourself and bring yourself back up and then run the play. It's, uh, it really kills your entire offensive rhythm. Second down and six here. Siebert back on as quarterback. Three wide receivers here to the near side. Low snap, but digging it out of Siebert. Rolling left, firing, and that pass is incomplete. Intended here on the near side, and it looked like maybe John Rhodes... Patrick Elliott was there as well as the deep route. And now Rawlings checking back into the ball game, and it was John Rhodes. A significant time for the much bigger receiver, John Rhodes. Spent basically most of his life as a quarterback, came here and said, you know what, we've got one. Moved to receiver a couple of years ago. Third down and six here, Seaver down to the pistol. They're going to swing it out here to the near side. To the 20, out to the 25. First down yardage and more. And now popped at the end of the play, but nicely done on the swing pass. Ben Slaughter, and that is where he is good. On the outside, using that speed. What a pop by Clint Cole. But it's a first down nonetheless out to the Chaparral 35-yard line. A good play call there, too, on the third and long with the cushion that the Temple Wildcats were giving. They were playing uh, close to the sticks and you were able to get the blockers outside and line them up on the man and it was good blocking downfield and a first down for Westlake. An 11 yard pickup, here's the first down handoff to Chavez. Straight up the gut, Chavez falling forward to the 40 yard line and now inside 11 minutes to play in the ball game. Westlake with that 11 point de deficit, 41 to 30. And a nice gain out to the 40 yard line after the 11 yard catch and run. Now coming off the field is Calvin Anderson as he has issues with his helmet. So we'll have to watch that left side of the offensive line here and we'll see Raghav Kathuria who has done his job on the offensive side of the ball really putting on weight and being a more athletic left tackle. Hard to get more athletic than Calvin Anderson. Rolling that side is Siebert and throws downfield and that pass incomplete. Looked like Patrick Elliott was the intended receiver. He was going long, got tied up in the middle of the field along the left hash mark, and could not really finish that route. Staying right with him defensively for the Wildcats was Eduardo Escobedo, the junior, who was in there at free safety in place of D'Artagnan Say, who limped off the field in the third quarter. Quick score update from New Braunfels Canyon. Lake Travis took a 20 to three halftime lead and held on 20 to six. Third game is already over. Third down and five. Now Jordan's going to try to run for it. At the 40, he's going to be wrapped up well shy of the 39-yard line. And again, just plays breaking down for the Chaparrales and a nice play in the open field there as once again Michael Hicks wrapping up Jordan Sievert. Sievert tried to stiff arm him, got a hold of the face mask, but could not get rid of it. And now we have an injured player, and it looks like Deshaun Sellers. Let's take a timeout briefly here. We'll pause 60 seconds. This is Westlake football. 
At age 40, attorney and Marine Corps reservist David Little was the picture of health until the left side of his body went completely numb. We were on the phone while he was driving home when he suddenly stopped talking. My dad had a stroke when he was driving me home. I'm just really glad he ended up at St. David's South Austin. St. David's South Austin saved my life. Do you know what to do in an emergency? Visit stdavids.com to learn more. The Steam Team, your number one choice for cleaning residential and commercial carpet, tile, and wood flooring, upholstery, air ducts, and more, including 24-hour emergency water and fire damage restoration. The Steam Team is an Austin original, locally owned and operated since 1983. All employees are trained and certified by the Institute of Inspection, Cleaning, and Restoration. We guarantee our services and will do whatever it takes to please our customers. Call 451-TEAM or online at thesteamteam.com. Elliott will punt it away, his first punt of the ball game, and he is averaging just over 43 and a half yards per punt. And this is going to roll down to the 25-yard line, and it'll come to a rest at the 25. So 10-01, and now Westlake going to go back out on defense, and really it has not been a tale of Westlake stopping the Temple Wildcats and Chad President. It's just been the turnovers that have allowed them to take the ball away and get the offense back on the field. The offense struggling here when the ball is given back to them here in the fourth quarter. So in difference, we saw 13 points off turnovers in the third quarter. And the turnover by Rhodes Leg is second interception of the ball game, third of the year in just two ball games. And it will be first down and 10 from the 25-yard line. President with the handoff. President giving it to Carr. Carr wrapped up right at the 20, not right at the 28-yard line, but he falls forward to the 29. Temple has had 11 possessions in this game. They've scored six touchdowns and have turned it over five times. So like you said, Westlake's defense has not been able to come up with a stop on downs and forced uh, Temple to punt. It's all been turnovers. And Westlake's defense needs to come up with a play now that the clock is under 10 minutes. Officially a gain of three at the 29-yard line. A four-man front for Westlake here on second and seven. Once again, Zone Reed now swallowing it up as Carr, but Carr able to just stay on his feet and muscle his way out to the 35-yard line. Carr not a big man, and for Jeff Carr, we look at his height and weight, 5'7", 165 pounds, and he is just able to squirt his way through traffic. And he is anything but untouched, but he just does not go down. First down and 10 on the run out to the 37-yard line. It was a pickup of eight yards. Now, once again, Carr trying to make a move to the outside and a good second effort after initially hitting him once again for the defensive unit that's really playing a slew of backups in the, the linebacker position. Bryce Boivois once again coming up with a big play on Carr and stopping him to a minimal gain out to the 41-yard line. It'll be second down and six after the four-yard gain. Back in the shotgun goes President, flanked by Carr. Two receivers to the far side left, and now some movement once again. We saw back-to-back -back false start penalties last drive, start. and now another Offense. false start. Five yards, replay the down. We'll go down to the sidelines here to Abe Garcia in just a moment here after this second down play, but they're gonna mark off five yards. It'll be second down and 11. The ball's moved back to the 36-yard line. 8.45 to play here. Westlake with an 11-point deficit. Temple leading 41 to 30. And now the zone read, and it's going to go to Carr. Carr trying to cut it back and can't. We go down to the sidelines to Abe Garcia. Yeah, and Joe, you can see what Temple's trying to do now. Taking the balls out of the hands of quarterback president, and now they're running the ball. They're staying between the tackles. Carr, two hands on the ball. You know, they're doing a little bit of clock management. Westlake has all three timeouts left in this game. They're only down 11. They need to stop here. Big stop here on third and 11 for Westlake. A gain of one sets it up at the right hash mark at the 36-yard line. A big, big play. Four-man front for the Chaparrales. Third down and 11. Here's the play action. President goes to the right side to a wide open receiver, and that pass is caught. And caught in the open field by Davion Curtis, and it's good enough for a first down to the uh, Chaparral 49-yard line. A 13-yard pickup turns into first down yardage for the Temple Wildcats, and we're at an even eight minutes to play in the ballgame. First down and 10, ball just inside the midfield stripe. The snap to President and the give to Marcus Hatcher, who is wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage, but still manages to use his big body and angle forward just outside the numbers to the 47-yard line. So what was about a no gain on the play turned into a three-yard gain. 
And when you're on third and 11, and you absolutely have to get a stop for your defense, you're almost willing to at least give up the possibility of the big play in order to make sure the receiver does not get 13 yards and stop and just have a wide open field for the easy hook play, and that's what they had right there for the first down. Two wide receivers to the far side right, one here to the near side left, and once again, early movement along the line of scrimmage. Offense, five-yard penalty, further down. And a lot of mistakes here coming from this Temple unit who jump in a little bit early, and now you can see hands on the hips on both sides. A little less of that body language on the Westlake side of the ball, but now what was second down and eight now turns into the ball moving back into Temple territory. It's second down and 13. Now President just a fake and a run to the right side. He bounces it outside the numbers, and he is knocked out of bounds just inside the 45-yard line at the 44. So a nice pickup there for Chad President, who faked the dive inside and took it around the right side. And Coach Mike Spradlin and his coaching staff, no doubt they're going to be happy if they get this win tonight. But there's a lot of mistakes on their sideline as well. Countless turnovers. I don't know. We, I don't know how many false starts they've had just in this half, plus the five turnovers. So each side has really played a, a fairly sloppy game this uh, tonight here. A seven-yard pickup for President sets up third down and six. Another big opportunity, and this time getting the handoff is Marcus Hatcher, who picks up the first down. Hatcher inside the 25, inside the 10, down to the five-yard line as he is into the end zone. But a flag? No. No flag. And there it is. Actually, we found it. Everybody calling for it, not only in the stands, but also in the booth here. In fact, you can actually see a line of people from fans to coaches call for the hold. Everybody saw it. Took me a while to find the flag as it was right at the feet of Darren Allman. So it's a holding penalty. It'll wave off the touchdown. And a big, big break for Westlake. Holding on the offense number 33. Spot foul. We play third down. That's Mentor. And you can see Brian Jones not scared. He knows this is a big time game. He's identifying every penalty and every player to make it. And Minter, really that big halfback in there that kind of plays a second tight end role, if you will, especially when they go wide on a toss sweep like they did there to break that touchdown run. But it comes back all the way to the Temple 46 yard, or excuse me, the Chaparral 46 yard line. Three wide receivers to the far side right, one here to the near side left in the gun, flanked by Hatcher. And here comes the rush. President wrapped up at the 45-yard line, and he goes down inside the 44 to big hit by Hudson Hall. The preseason all syntax linebacker comes up with a huge play on Chad President. We haven't called Hall's name too much tonight. They bring him on a blitz, and it works very well for Westlake. Fourth down here, and President's going to pooch it himself. A high end over end punt that's going to bounce towards the sideline, but actually takes a nice bounce just outside the numbers, and it will be Westlake football at the 21 yard line. So a big sack, the first one of the year for Hudson Hall, and this time the Chaparrales actually hold on defense, and they're down 11 with 6.15 to play, but it's end zone time now for the Chaparrales. And you want an idea of how hard it is to bring down Chad President, even though he's not the biggest guy in the world at 6'3, 190. Hudson Hall is a guy that can tackle. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of missed tackles on Chad President, some of the running backs. It took Hudson Hall quite a bit of time to get Chad President to the ground. He's a great athlete, but a huge sack there for Hall. Two wide receivers to the near side of the field, one to the far side, out of the gun. Jordan looking here to the near side. That pass is caught by Elliott at the 25, trying to work his way around the defender. Lost his footing, caught the ball in front of Clint Cole, and it's a seven-yard pickup on first down. Nice little out pattern there by Patrick Elliott. It seems like, John, that plays there all day. If Absolutely. they want it, if they want it, Elliott lined up here to the near side, two wide receivers to the far side left. On second down and three, out of the gun, same formation, throwing to the right side, and that pass is caught by Rawlings. Rawlings outside the 30, stepped out of a tackle at the 35-yard line and out of bounds on the far side of the field, the 37-yard line. Check that, it is not Rawlings, it is Rhodes. Rhodes making the catch, and that time John coming up with a nice catch and just spun his way out. Perfect route running by the quarterback of old, but the receiver of new, for the Chaparrales on varsity, really battling his way back from a slew of injuries his junior year. Still battling, but he's in there hanging tough in the slot right. First down and 10, 5.46 to play. Once again, this time it goes to Rawlings. Rawlings able to stay off one tackle, but can't stay off another. A huge hit once again, and a guy that's having a heck of a game for the Wildcats. It is Michael Hicks, number 27, just blew up Rawlings again, and it's a loss of three back to the 35-yard line. The key on that type of play is the other receiver, right? and there is Patrick Kelly. They've got a, that other receiver on that play has to get his block, but there's no way that, that play can be success, successful. 
Now out of the gun will be Rawlings. Rawlings on the quarterback keeper at the 35-yard line. Squirts forward, picks up positive yardage. But again, on second down, they opt for the run play. They get to the 36-yard line, do the chaparrales. So it'll be a third down and long situation here for Westlake. Four down territory as we're just inside 5.17 to play in the game. Now Jordan Siebert back in the ball game and now a timeout. I'm not too sure what the timeout is about. Didn't see it called. It's, a, it's an official timeout right now because no one has called. Looks like they might have had a clock management issue here. We'll see what Brian Jones is talking to his crew about. Yeah, Westlake Chaparral was actually a little hobbled there and was struggling to get off the field, so the referee stopped the clock. I don't know if the Temple coaching staff knew that that had happened, but they were upset that the clock was stopped. And uh, Please put five minutes, four seconds on the game clock. 5.04. So they're going to say that the clock stopped and 10 seconds ran off while that clock was not moving, so it's a little bit more than 13 seconds off the game clock from where it was. 5.04 to play. Still third down and 11 here for the Chaparral. They need a big third down play here. Two wide receivers to the far side left, one here to the near side right. From the right hat mark on third down and 11. Siebert back to pass. Has time. Throws downfield. One-on-one -on -one coverage. And that pass is incomplete. And a flag comes in and it's a big one. Underthrown, Patrick Elliott slowed down and he did exactly what you are coached to do when the ball goes up and it is short. Slow down your route and just allow the defender to run right into you. That's a pretty impossible play there for a corner. Let's see if that was Cole or Grayer. Pass interference gets the defense number 15. 15 yard penalty, on that first down. And a huge break there. They saw the man coverage on the outside, and Jordan did a good job of picking it up and just firing that direction. And it's one of those tricks of the trade. Jerry Rice, Michael Irvin, all those guys that go deep and allow the underthrown ball to just kind of slow down their route and let the receiver or let the defender run right into them. It is an old school trick, and it works almost every single time. But a good job there for Westlake to keep the drive alive, first and 10. Back to look, back to pass. Siebert over the middle, and that pass is incomplete. And now you can hear some of the screams from the sideline of the Westlake coaching staff, and that actually may be Darren Allman wanting the hold, and he might not be incorrect. But no flag thrown there, good coverage there by Thomas. And you could see Jordan Siebert, he saw that before Sean Rawlings broke, he saw it was gonna be wide open. And about 10 yards out, Sean Rawlings took a bump and it probably should have been a hold, but didn't get the call. Three wide receivers to the far side left. Rolling left is Jordan on second down and 10. Firing over the middle, and that pass is juggled and caught at the 41-yard line. No, they're going to say that he did not hang on to it. Elliott caught it and then could not control it to the ground, so it's an incomplete pass. And again, a third and long situation here for Westlake. Five turnovers for the Temple Wildcats has really allowed this game that has been just littered with mistakes on both sides of the football like John alluded to earlier but it's made it quite exciting here with 437 to play in the ball game three wide receivers to the far side left Jordan out of the gun third down and 10 looking downfield has a man and that pass is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver at the 30 yard line and it was Zach Dansby Dansby hit the deck one might have gotten tied up a little bit there on the near side but could not keep his feet incomplete and a very important fourth down for Westlake the ball marked at the 49 yard line in Temple territory. And I expect Temple to possibly bring a blitz. Watch out for Dominic Thompson here. He's been coming on a few of these pass plays, and he is the man right now for this Temple defense. Fourth down and 10, the ball marked the 49-yard line. They bunch up the receivers on the left side. Back to pass, they pick up the blitz nicely. Now Jordan going over the middle, and that pass is juggled and caught in between two receivers. How the 5'8", 160-pound senior or junior came down with that ball. I have no idea, but Rawlings, often a football magnet, somehow comes down with the football. It's a gain to the 31-yard line, an 18-yard pickup, and Rawlings has the first down. First down and 10, a quick snap. Jordan back to pass, looking downfield, fires up in the middle, and that pass is incomplete. Intended it inside the 15-yard line for Rawlings, and now Thomas is going to get hit with a penalty, and Rawlings is down. Thomas is a little upset, maybe at himself. Most likely upset with the official. And this time, they're not going to let him get away with it. 
Very aggressive player out of the free safety position in Ladarius Thomas, but he might have been too aggressive on that play. Kind of gave a glancing blow to Sean Rawlings. It was late. It wasn't a real violent collision to the head, but just enough to draw the flag as the ball was clearly by Sean Rawlings. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a direct, hard hit to the head. Uh, even a glancing blow when Sean Rawlings is not expecting it can be a dangerous hit. Personal foul. Defense number 32. Hit to a defensive helmet. Blow to the helmet. By rule, number 32 is ejected. Well, they're, they're saying number 32, and that's actually not correct. It's Ladarius Thomas who delivered the hit, but we'll have to see if Thomas stays in the ballgame. They said it's number 32. Number 32 on our roster is Eduardo Escobedo, but I didn't see him involved in the play. We'll have to see if he stays in the ballgame. But nonetheless, it's a first down, and the ball inside the 17-yard line at the 16. Jordan rolling here to the near side. That pass is caught at the 10-yard line. Inside the five, Ben Slaughter scores! Touchdown, Westlake! Touchdown, Ben Slaughter from 16 yards out. Just a nice little pitch and catch from Siebert to Slaughter, and Westlake once again digs into that Temple lead. And a great block here on the outside. You see the little pass there in the flat to Slaughter. Couldn't see who the wide receiver was out there, but wide receiver blocking is so important. We've seen Temple's wide receivers do a great job of that right there, Westlake. A touchdown and back to a one-score game. They're right in this game with three timeouts left. Slaughter with his second touchdown of the year, his first as a receiver coming out of the backfield. And now Westlake going for two again here in the pistol formation. Here comes the rush. Picked up briefly. Jordan to the end zone, and that pass is caught for a two-point conversion. And a nice grab there by Zach Dansby. Dansby using his big body, getting physical, and coming down with the football. A two-point conversion is good with 4-10 to play in a ball game. It is Temple 41, Westlake 38. Don't go anywhere. This is Westlake football. On game days, you see me running out here with close to 100 other people. It's a team effort. It takes all of us to make UT football a success. It's a lot like you and your finances. You need to surround yourself with the best people in the business. That's where University Federal Credit Union comes in. The UFCU team works hard to make sure your financial game plan is always in shape. University of Texas Athletics and University Federal. So close, we share the same name. Welcome back to Chaparral Stadium live at Austin, Texas. A 10-play, 79-yard drive capped by a 16-yard touchdown reception by Ben Slaughter. Just a line drive kickoff here, and that ball's going to be fielded by Cole at the 23. Out to the 25, has a blocker in Thompson. Now he's going to be brought down from behind at the 32-yard line, but he falls forward to the 34. Trying to see who came out of that, and it looks like for the Chaparral's Nate Flanagan getting an opportunity to play on special teams, and he does provide the hit. A little celebration going on with his teammate Brian Kenny here on the near side. Kenny with a touchdown grab tonight. Two touchdowns for Kenny, the senior, first year varsity man. Part of the 38 points on the board. The 16 yard touchdown run, touchdown catch, I should say, for Ben Slaughter. The two point conversion good to Zach Dansby. First down and 10. The 33 yard line is president. Now he's watched his lead dwindle down to three. And now, once again, Flags come in. And if you were to describe the second half of the Temple Wildcats, you could do it. Five yard penalty. First down. You could really describe it in two words false start and penalties. Technically, those are three <laughs> words, but false start and turnovers. There you go. First down and 15 here for the 28 yard line after the false start penalty. The handoff will go up the middle of the car. Car just diving back towards the original line of scrimmage. And he's able to get past the 31 to the 32 yard line. What I meant to say was two topics. Two right. topics, not two words. Each time Westlake has been able to get close to Temple, they've responded really well with an offensive drive. 
obviously a score here, a, a touchdown here would end this ball game. So Westlake's defense needs to come up strong. Now President giving the ball off to Carr. Carr trying to cover up the football and a nice job there in the open field once again. I tell you what, when the ball game is over and film is done on the weekend, and if you even watch on the weekend on Huddle, you're going to look at number 46, Bryce Bouvois. And I tell you what, he has really turned in a heck of a game as a backup linebacker. Third down and five, a huge play, perhaps the play of the game on defense for the Chaparrales. A four-man front, barking out the signals as the crowd comes alive on the Chaparral side of the field. Third and five from the 38-yard line. And now President over the middle, and that pass is juggled, and it's incomplete. Westlake holds, Westlake holds, fourth down. That's just a heck of a read by President. I'm almost more impressed by President staying in the pocket and rifling that ball across the field. It was a good pass, and he showed a lot of moxie staying in there, but great coverage on the back end of the play. And once again, a young man that fills in for Jack Meredith, Matthew Andrea, with a huge play. Going for it on fourth down and five, it'll be a pooch punt. And it's a nice one here by President. Get away from the football, as the Chaparrales will watch the ball roll inside the 15-yard line, down to about the 13. So they'll have to answer with 87 yards of offense. But the momentum and the ball game now in the hands of the Chaparrales, if you can believe it. <laughs> Three, two yeah. minutes and 40 seconds to go, and Jordan Siebert and the Westlake offense have a shot. I don't know how we got to this point that Westlake actually has a has the ball with a shot to tie or win this football game with two minutes and 40 seconds left. It's all about execution now. This Westlake offense has looked very good when they have not shot themselves in the foot with snaps and penalties as they come out in the I formation. Power eye look, Siebert under center. Play action pass, Siebert looking downfield, has a man and that pass is incomplete and a very dangerous tipped pass there. But it's incomplete, second down and 10 coming up from the 13 yard line. Either way though, what a learning experience this is for both of these teams. Uh, the, the way Westlake has fought back, uh, that, that shows a lot of character on this team and you have a lot of mistakes to fix. There's gonna be a lot of things that both of these coaching staffs can point to, uh, major growth will happen because of this game for both of these teams. Second down and 10 with three wide receivers to the far side of the field. One back remains with Jordan in the backfield. Siebert on a two-step drop, looking downfield, still has time, steps up, fires to the near side, and that pass is underthrown and incomplete. Intended for Dansby, guarded closely there in the backfield by a very large cornerback. Six foot three, 180 pound senior in, in Jamarquis Williams. First time we've called his name as he's been in and out of the ball game here, trolling. But you have to remember, one of their best safeties, Darius Thomas, out of the ball game, ejected. No, he's still in the ball game. They actually kicked out Escobedo. Must have happened off the ball, John, because we thought it was on Sean Rawlings. Nonetheless, it's third down and ten here. A clap of the hands, blitz shown by Thompson. He backs off. Now Jordan fires towards the far sideline, and that pass is caught. It's caught, and it's caught for a first down. How did Sean Rawlings come down with that football? I don't know, but he did, and it's a first down grab for Sean Rawlings. Out of bounds, and the clock will stop at the 223 mark. A 14 yard pickup and a first down. Sean Rawlings is a football player right there. Oh my goodness, what, what? a catch by Sean Rawlings. We get a good look at it here, but a quick snap, low snap, but Jordan fields it. Looking, tons of time, fires over the middle, and that pass is left for and caught! Caught by Patrick Elliott at the 40 yard line in Wildcat Country. First down, Westlake. A 33 yard grab and first down. Patrick Elliott trying to quickly regain his breath as he hit the turf hard. And Westlake has some time to breathe here with the, with the clock stop while the chains reset. And they're going to the line really quickly. Thought we might have an opportunity to go to A. Garcia. Two wide receivers here to the near side. Jordan looking, still looking, has time, fires to the far sideline. That pass caught for a nine yard gain, and now you want to take a timeout. But two minutes, and the clock runs inside two minutes, and they're not, now they're going to stop it, and a timeout on the field will take it as well. 1.59 to play here in the ball game. Chaparral's on the move. Wildcats 41, Westlake 38. This is Westlake football. Beyond companionship, there are other reasons we call dog man's best friend. For years, dogs have been trained to detect all kinds of things, like bed bugs. ABC's Bedbug Dog can detect bed bugs in the smallest cracks and crevices at any stage of development with amazing accuracy, even more accurate than the most skilled pest specialists. And 
Accurate detection means quicker, more cost-effective elimination. If you suspect a bed bug problem, call us. ABC Home and Commercial Services, specialists for your environment. We welcome you back to Chaparral Stadium. Excitement would be an understatement here. A nine yard grab by Patrick Elliott on the far side. Got the ball down to the, right around the Temple 34 yard line. It'll be second down and one. Out of the timeout, they bunch the receivers here to the near side. And a handoff here to the near side, inside the 30. And now Ben Slaughter trying to cut it out outside, and he does. Ben Slaughter with a first down run to the 20 yard line. Inside the 20 yard line. In fact, they're gonna say he stepped out of bounds right at the 21. Either way, a 13-yard pickup and a first down as Ben Slaughter. What a heck of a call out of the timeout, John. Yeah, Westlake's at the at a point right now where they need to actually run some clock. Uh, they were in a hurry to begin this drive, but you don't want this Temple offense with too much time if they get back on the on the field. First down to 10, firing over the middle. That pass caught by Sean Rawlings. Rawlings at the 10. Rawlings tripped up at the eight-yard line, but he falls forward to the six. And Rawlings, our shaft of the week, urging this crowd of 8,000 strong, trying to get this ball game for the first time on the side of a Chaparral. 41 to 38 with 147 to play and the Chaparral's now within striking distance just outside the six yard line. Like John said, they have time. Power eye looks, hand off, and the ball is fumbled. It's on the turf, but covering it up nicely is Alex Chavez. And Alex Chavez with a one yard gain, fumbles the football, but collects it immediately. What a play by Chavez just to get back on the football. Saw that in the playoffs last year, a little some trouble from Alex Chavez as that almost should be a late hit on Thompson as Chavez was huddled around the ball and he came in with the helmet to the back of the neck and shoulder area. Second and goal from the five. And this time the handoff will go to Alex Chavez and he loses yardage. What a huge play defensively there is. Now Westlake obviously well within field goal range here, but a timeout has been called and we will keep it here. Let's go down to the sidelines and Abe Garcia, definitely a palpable hue of excitement on the sidelines, Abe. Yeah, it's been going pretty nuts down here. The crowd is back into it. It's been really loud since the beginning of the game. You know, the first time they've actually got excited. Sean Rawlings is, like John said, he's a football player. And I think that the number 11 jersey's on back over. <laughs> Very good. You're talking to a man that through his formidable years as a baseball player at St. Edward University, a four-year starter at St. Ed's. He's in the record books there, folks, and he wore the number 11. That's why he's very excited that uh, one of the more fantastic players on the field in the first two games has been Sean Rawlings. He's our shaft of the week. Came up with an amazing catch on a third down play on the far side, 13-yard pickup. Has come up with two catches since then and has really put his team in an opportunity here. Field goal range for Dallin Nelson to tie the ball game up at least, but the Chaparral's won six. Third down and goal here from the 10-yard line after the five-yard loss on the play before. Coming out of the timeout for the Wildcats. Third down and goal from the 10. Here's the play action. Rolling here to the near side. Jordan fires towards the end zone. And that pass is caught. It's caught. Is it a touchdown? Yes, it is. Patrick Elliott comes up with a huge catch. Touchdown, Westlake. Touchdown, Patrick Elliott. For the third time tonight, Jordan Siebert finds number four. Touchdown, Westlake. And the Chaparrales have the lead. We have seen three unbelievable catches on this final drive for the Westlake Chaparrales. Patrick Elliott, what a hands catch there by the wide receiver. And he gets that left foot down. Just unbelievable skills by Rawlings and Elliott on this final drive. And don't forget Jordan Siebert. He has really looked like that senior quarterback that Westlake uh, needed at the beginning of the year. And that is a huge extra yep. point. It was a three-point game, and Nelson trills it to make it a four-point game. The Wildcats need a touchdown. And if ever you needed a big catch at the right time, it was Patrick Elliott. We have talked long and hard about Sean Rawlings, but that is one of the best catches you will ever see from a wide receiver. And it really has kind of a reminder of a Super Bowl game-winning pass from a guy that plays quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. When he went downfield in the waning seconds of that Super Bowl and one of the better receivers in the game at the time, 
when you think about just what that catch meant at that time, what a huge shot in the arm for the Westlake program here coming off that loss to Cedar Park. Yeah, how many times in this game was Westlake on the brink of really being out of the game completely? You know, there are many times when Temple had the ball up, you know, at one point up 35 to 17, and just a lot of times where Temple was maybe a play away of, of from putting this game away, and it didn't happen. Westlake stayed strong, really fought back, and just an unbelievable effort. Whichever way this game goes, just a classic type of game uh, in week one. What a treat to have it this early in the season. Well, it has been a barn burner here as we are just after 10.35 local time here in Central Texas. One minute remaining in the ball game. 10 plays, 87 yards, 140 off the clock on the scoring drive. A 10-yard touchdown catch by Patrick Elliott and a catch that he will replay over and over and over again. But don't think for a second that Chad President in this offense with two timeouts and one minute cannot go down and score a touchdown very quickly. So Westlake, you have to stay disciplined, especially on this kickoff. The kickoff coverage right here is huge. And then when this defense gets on the field, they've played much better in the second half. And obviously, you don't want to give up the big play. It's going to be an exciting finish, Joe. Yeah, Dallin Nelson lining up for the kickoff of his career here, trying to figure out exactly where to kick it. No wind to help him out, but it'll be a line drive kick. It'll angle towards the out-of-bounds marker, but it touched the player. It touched the player. And that is a huge break for Westlake, as at the end of the play, Davion Curtis did not get out of the way of the football. That ball was headed for the out-of-bounds marker there, the, the apron, if you will, John. That would have been a penalty, and it would have been great field position. Now you're inside the 18-yard eight, the line, right around the 17-yard line, and a lot of green behind the Westlake defense. No doubt going into a cover two and staying away from the big play. That is a, yeah, that's just a gigantic error for Temple in field position here to reach down and touch that ball as it's going out of bounds. And now the Westlake defense on the field with a chance to pull off really a miraculous comeback win here at Chaparral Stadium. First down and 10 from the 18-yard line. Four wide receivers in the set. They're going to swing it out to Carr. Carr with some room out to the 20, to the 25, out to the 30, and he runs out of real estate there, but wisely so as the play ends. Still some contact as D'Angelo Bell, who is outside of one catch in the first half, has been rather silent on the outside with an eight-yard gain, and the clock stops at 54 seconds. Two timeouts for the Wildcats as they are down by four. Back to pass is President, goes to the sideline. That pass is caught for a first down at the 40-yard line. Trying to escape as D'Angelo Bell does for a moment, but only falls forward to the 41-yard line. 45 seconds remaining in the ball game, and Westlake just trying to hang on. A 10-yard touchdown reception by Patrick Elliott. That's how quickly this Temple offense can move the football. Back to pass is President. Fires over the middle, and that pass is caught by Bell. Bell trying to escape, and again, he steps out of bounds. It's a 13-yard gain and a first down, 37 seconds. And right now, folks, the Wildcats have yet to use their two timeouts. They are playing a less than two-minute drill perfectly here as President, showing his ability to fire to the outside. First down and 10 from the Chaparral 46-yard line. Here comes the rush. He's flushed out of the pocket. President trying to step out of it and does. Inside the 40, and he steps out of bounds right at the 39-yard line. A seven-yard pickup on first down. will be second down and three, but more importantly, the clock stops at 30 seconds. And now the defense is trying to hang on. A lot of coaching from the sidelines just to try to hang on here preserve this four-point lead. They swing it out here to the near side, and that pass is caught by Carr, but he has to go back to get the ball, and this one is going to be a loss. A loss on the play, and nice job there. Carr was looking for it, but the timing was off, and he got caught up trying to come back to the football, and he loses yardage, and a big play there for the Westlake defense on a miscue between President and Carr. Timeout on the field. We will keep it here. 22 seconds left of the ball game. Their first of the two timeouts that they have left in the chamber. And John, it has been a whale of a fourth quarter dominated by Westlake, especially here in the last five minutes of the ball game. Yeah, it's been unbelievable. And you have a third and seven now. And Chad President 
We know he can scramble. This is obviously a situation where you want to throw the football. One timeout, 22 seconds left. We mentioned how big it was to get up four points. So they got to get into the end zone here. And that play right there was big for the Westlake Chaparrales to be able to make a stop behind the line of scrimmage, get a timeout call for Temple. The defense can catch their breath now for the final 22 seconds. 86 points on the board for both ball clubs, 45 to 41. 22 seconds remaining, one timeout for the Wildcats who are in the shotgun. The ball rests, third down and seven at the 43-yard line in Chaparral territory. Four wide receivers, three to the right, one to the near side left. President, back to pass. Here comes the pressure, he dumps it off to Carr. Carr at the 40, inside the 35, inside the 30, inside the 20, and he steps out of bounds inside the 20-yard line at the 19. A first down yardage and more. It's just a little swing pass and a pickup of 25 yards and a first down. The clock stops at 15 seconds, and now the Wildcats making this ever so interesting. But at some point here in the next couple of plays, John, they've got to go to the end zone. Here's the quick snap, Another and now false a false start. start. Unbelievable. It has been the bugaboo, not this drive, but in dominating the second half. False start. Up, uh, five yards. First down now in 15 as the ball will move back to the 25-yard line. Just inside the 25, nose of the football right at the 25-yard line. Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell, Abe Garcia down on the sidelines. And we await the end of what has been a marvelous game. We knew it was going to be a shootout. It didn't look like it was going to be much for Westlake, but they have come back to take a four-point lead with one minute to play. Now 15 seconds. Here's the play action. President stepping up. President looking. Headed to the right side of the field, trying to get out of bounds, and does just outside the 17-yard line is where he steps out of bounds. Eight seconds, and John, you can only think that this is the last play of the game. Yeah, you're completely fine with giving up those seven or eight yards there because it took seven seconds off of the clock. Took and a lot of time for him to get to the far side of the field, and now Westlake is going to take a timeout. Yeah. That is a wise decision. Allow your group to really calm down, collect themselves, and gear up to what will be the final play of the game. You could consider here also if you're Temple, and you know Westlake's going to be playing back a little bit and guarding the end zone. You could consider doing a quick pass over the middle here. Try to get it maybe just inside the 10-yard line. It's risky, but you have plenty of time with eight seconds left. Go down, take your time out, and gear up for one shot. Otherwise, you can take a quick shot to the end zone here, and if it's, if it's incomplete, you maybe have a second or two left, but probably not. So we'll see what Temple's strategy is here, whether they uh, elect to go short and use that timeout or possibly treat this as the final play of the ballgame. And sometimes you really just want it to be simple in this situation when your back's against the wall and you've got to score to win. And it can't be a field goal. It's got to be six if you want to walk out of here and head back up I-35 with a win, your second straight over the Chaparrales. Again, remember, this is a team that beat the Chaparrales at Wildcat Stadium a year ago, 49-42. to Westlake trying to answer with a come-from-behind victory. Eight seconds remain on the clock here in the fourth quarter. A field goal will not do it. A touchdown is the only way the Wildcats can get out of here with a W. And you can hear the Westlake faithful. President out of the gun on second down. President rolling right. Now the pressure comes and President doesn't go down. President doesn't go down, now he does. He falls forward and there's one second left. President able to escape, falls down at the 19-yard line, and there is one second left. And they will take a timeout. And how fortunate is that for Temple to have the one second left? Boy, they stopped that clock very quickly, but you know Spradlin was all over that official on the far sideline calling timeout as quickly as possible. Very fortunate that that was not the last play of the ball game, and Temple is going to get one more shot from the 20-yard line. Well, you think back to all of the plays that really set this opportunity up for the Chaparrales. Not turning over the football. In the second half, they have not turned the football over. That is not the case for the Wildcats. In the third quarter, the Wildcats turned it over and gave up 13 points as a result. Five turnovers in the ballgame, two of them on a Rhodes leg interception. One of those interceptions in the second quarter going for 70 yards and a score, and right now, that is the difference of the ball game, along with a 10-yard touchdown grab by Patrick Elliott. Think about all the plays, the third down catch, the 13-yard reception by Sean Rawlings that kept the drive alive, at least the third down conversion, if you will. Twice, the Chaparrales convert on third down. Two of them huge passing plays 
13 yards to Rawlings, then a big blast over the middle to Patrick Elliott, a leaping grab, and then Elliott with probably the best catch of his career. It's third down and 10. This is it. President in the gun, back to pass. President flushed out. President fires to the end zone, and that pass is batted away. It's batted away, incomplete, and Westlake has stunned the Temple Wildcats and open up their home opener at Chaparral Stadium with a come-from-behind victory. Final score, the Wildcats bottle the Chaparral's 45 to 41. And Westlake's team sprinted out on the field to celebrate together. You would think it's a playoff game, but it had a playoff type atmosphere. Down 35-17 in the third quarter. What a comeback. 28 to six run to close out this ball game. One of the, really one of the greatest comebacks I'm sure in Westlake history. And one of the better high school football games you'll see. We have seen a gym. An instant classic, if you will. And there will be a celebration tonight in the hills of Westlake. Your final score, Westlake 45, Temple 41, and an absolute thriller that, hang on, that hung on until one second was on the clock. And even when the ball went into the air and started spiraling towards the end zone, you knew that there was an opportunity that possibly one of the athletic receivers for Temple could come down with it, even off a of ricochet. That's how athletic they are. But at the end of the day, the ball was knocked away, and Westlake comes away with one of the more thrilling victories that I can remember, at least in covering the Chaparrales. We talked about how they were able to score 14 points in less than three minutes to get back into the state semifinal game and tie the ball game going into the waning seconds of the fourth quarter. It took a field goal by a guy that had missed two in the ball game. And it just so happens that Westlake came out on the wrong end of that one. Trust me, folks, the majority of this team was on the field when that happened. Now they have a taste to feel what happens at the end of the game when you are able to come back and win in such dramatic fashion. Believe me, this is a learning process. And a lot will be learned, both negatively and, of course, positively. They're going to remember this one for a while. And you, uh, you want to know what this coaching staff thinks of Sean Rawlings as a football player. He was out there on that last play on defense. Uh, just a, an amazing drive on the, on the final drive for Westlake. And then for the defense to really stand up and play the way they did in the second half. Really remarkable. And, and you got to give your hat off, uh, take your hat off to Temple as well. You know, this offense is one of, get, one of the better offenses we'll see all season, certainly. Uh, on, on the Westlake side, and just an amazing football game. And it's going to be a real disappointing, heartbreaking drive up I-35 for the Temple Wildcats, but a lot of positives can be taken out of this game for them as they head on uh, into their 2013 season. That is definitely one that will stay with you. Once again, we cruise into the back half of the 10 o'clock hour, folks. We will have an abbreviated post-game show coming up for you because we have held on with bated breath just like you have. Our thoughts with everybody listening in because you're getting texts from everywhere. Everybody wants to know, this is really the last game to actually end here on this second Friday night of high school football in the great state of Texas. And we have been treated to a gem. After the alma mater plays for the Westlake Chaparrales, we will hear from head coach Darren Allman, of course, Abe Garcia, ready with a post-game interview here in just a moment. But I would bet that Darren Allman probably does not have much of a voice, but we are no doubt going to hear from the head coach and just what true adversity means. A lot of mistakes. He said at the halftime, this team's got to grow up. They did some growing up in the second half. Even though it was just in bits and pieces, chunks, if you will, in the second half, John, this team had flourishes of really stepping up and growing up, and they come away with a victory. Yeah, we, we did not see any of the 15-yard penalties that we saw in the first half. Much cleaner played second half for the Westlake Chaparrales. Uh, we didn't have the turnovers. A few bad snaps, but, but cleaner in that area as well. So that's, I mean, that's it. That's the key to victory. And the, the defense played better. And it's, it's, a, it's a, certainly a game that the Westlake Chaparrales can build on. Uh, amazing win here tonight. Indeed. We're now ready with Abe Garcia, who is down on the field with a very excited and no doubt exhausted Darren Allman. Abe, take it away. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Coach, congratulations on that comeback win. You talked a little bit about at halftime about your team growing up, being more consistent. Did you grow up in the second half? 
Well, we did because we kept playing, and uh, you know, it's one of those nights where it's, uh, you know, uh, you can be real frustrated with the defense and, and so proud of them at the same time because, you know, Coach Bradlin and I were actually talking before the game, and we kind of both knew that it was going to be a, a track meet, and, and uh, we were talking about what good, good defense is nowadays, and shutouts are hard to come by, and obviously we didn't come anywhere close to that, but uh, what we talked about was making defensive stops at the right time, you know, and uh, uh, and, and that's what we did tonight is we, we, we stopped them when we had to, and the offense, you can't say enough about them, you know, and we – Guys, we've got so we can be so much better than what we are. That's the exciting thing. We we made so many mistakes tonight that um, yeah, uh, that weren't they weren't effort mistakes or anything else. Or just, you know we had a, a sweaty ball and we couldn't keep a ball dry and they were sweating so bad it had a lot to do with the snaps. And there's things that, that we'll be able to get corrected, uh, you know, on our end. But uh, man, just it doesn't matter how you win them. They all feel good when you win. It, it, you know, regardless of the score. So. So proud of our team and how the way they kept battling. And when it came down to the end and people had to make plays, we made them. And uh, two great stops there of our defense there at the last. And our special teams played uh, played well. Our kickoff coverage was good. And we had a lot of guys running down for the first time on that. We got good kickoff returns every time. Uh, and our punts were good. Our quick kicks weren't due to bad snaps sometimes. But uh, overall, I thought we played uh, – you know, really good. You know, we're better th at this time than we were a year ago, and that's the exciting thing. This was a similar game at their place a year ago, almost the identical score. Uh, but we finished this one, and we, we got a lead and held on to it, which we didn't do a year ago. So that's encouraging. Yeah, Coach, you faced two good quarterbacks in back-to-back -back weeks. Talk a little about your quarterback, who last year against Temple actually had kind of a coming-out party. Talk about his leadership in the second half, leading his team to a win. Well, they, uh, you know, Jordan played a great game, but uh, and. Uh, you know, he, he, Jordan's just such a calm, calming presence for our offense. He never panics, and uh, he just comes back and comes back. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of help. Uh, Slaughter and Chavez, great job running. We had several people catch the ball tonight um, out of the backfield. And uh, Zach Dansby tied in. Patrick Elliott, Sean, Sean made a couple great catches that were clutch. And uh, so uh, he was on, on the money tonight, Jordan was. And, uh, I think we were pretty balanced again. So really excited about what we're doing offensively. We've got to tighten up defensively, but uh, uh, you know we understand that, and that's what we that's what we'll do. We got to get some people healthy and make sure we get everybody back in the right place. All right, coach, enjoy the win. See you next week. Thanks. Well, thank you very much for the thoughts of Darren Allman again. Are you as tired as we are? This is going to look fantastic on television, folks. And of course, we'll have the post-game show coming up on the radio side. But again, final thoughts, John Nidell. Well, you know, Westlake, back in the 90s, when they used to go 10-0 and almost every year, these types of games were not really on the schedule in the non-district play. Darren Allman schedules these games for a reason. Uh, it's to have learning lessons, to learn lessons like they did last week at Cedar Park and tonight. You, you know, you learn how to lose and gain and grow from that, and you learn how to win, and that's what Westlake did tonight. Hopefully in the playoffs, it'll serve them well. Coming up next for the Temple Wildcats who fall to 1-1 one one on the season. Their road doesn't get any easier. They have the Dragons of South Lake Carroll. They'll come down I-35 from the greater Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex area, and they'll take on the Wildcats a week from tonight. And, of course, the Chaparrales back-to-back -back home games. They welcome in an arch nemesis who, for the last two times out, the Chaparrales have had their number in the regular season a year ago at Tigerland Stadium and at Kyle Field a year ago, or excuse me, at Waco ISD Stadium a year ago in the playoffs as Westlake defeated A&M Consolidated not once but twice in the 2012 season. We'll see if the A&M Consolidated Tigers can repay the favor. We'll be back next week, same time, same channel. And, of course, the final score, Westlake in a thrilling come-from-behind victory, 45-41 over the Temple Wildcats. This is Westlake football.